Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in that wonderful Technicolor rainbow in between, tonight is the AEL Finals. On the red side, we have Iridescent Dawn, a Supernova, whose season started at a bit rough, finishing their group at 2-2. Two and two. Coming into the playoffs, they were definitely an uh, underdog, but on their journey here to the finals, they have only dropped a single game to their own group's first seed in Elysium Super Hot showing that they are here to play, but not only to play, but also to win. And on the blue side, we have Bing Chiller's Emerald, who after an undefeated streak in the regular season, have had a much rougher time of it in the playoffs with multiple five game series, including one against the sister squad of Supernova in Iridescent Dawn Blast Cone. Will they be able to bring back that regular season dominance or will Supernova get revenge for their sister squad and take home the chip for themselves? It's all decided tonight. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Let's Pretty as always. And joining me tonight, we have a special guest stepping in to cast it is redacted how you doing tonight redacted hey how's it going pretty i'm doing pretty awesome i'm doing pretty great happy to be casting the grand finals here of the ages executioners league i know quite a bit of the names here in this league so honestly it's like it's like a little uh reunion you know with old friends so happy to see what uh games we get going today and um if these players are going to get yeeted or if they haven't changed in <laughs> over the past like three years come on guys. yeah we've got a, we've got a pretty stack <laughs> we've got a pretty stacked <laughs> matchup tonight like i said it's Bing chillers it's iridescent dawn supernova they've had some great journeys to get here to the finals and before we get there even before we get to game one we've got some pretty special announcements in our all stars for the ael do you want to take that one away i will starting off with our Third team of all stars, we have Andy Chef in the top lane, OP Kill Switch in the jungle, XBKP in mid, and Vortex Bot Griffin support for our third team. Moving on to the second team here. Woo, Rutledge in top, Worm Jones, Tough Daddy, All Gucci, and Court JJ. And can we get a drum roll for the first team, please? <laughs> Our first team, AEL Winter All-Stars of 2024. We have Masuf in the top lane. Zhao PP, that boy do it again in the jungle. Nuffy's in mid lane incarcerated in alley -oops in the bot and support respectively. So congrats to all the players here for those all-star selections. I know you definitely earned it. And it's nice to be recognized by your peers. Yeah, I think a lot of what I'm really happy with for the All-Stars voting this time around is we saw a lot of different teams represented throughout the course of those teams. And especially on that first team, looking at just that mid-jungle duo right there, it is not surprising that they ended up taking away that first seed team. It's just a little bit unfortunate to not see them here in the finals. Xiao Pupi and Nuffy's had a great season. And again, falling to Bing Chillers, I guess it's just going to be a matter of, did they lose to the tournament winners or did they lose to the team that only lost to their sister squad? Yeah, absolutely. It was not the expected outcome, the ID versus ID finals, the prophecy that we've wanted so much since literally what 2022 at this point now they've it's been, been screaming years, that yeah. yeah 2022 2020 maybe 2021 but definitely 2022 uh yeah it still has not came to pass so i guess it's just another year around where id versus id finals is the meme coined by the legendary buffster himself still hasn't come to fruition though but next up we are going to have some few talking points before we get into the finals here we're gonna look at some of the uh stats of both of our teams here bing chillers and id blasters and we're gonna start with the bot lane here gritty so i'll let you go ahead and take that one off yeah, we had to highlight the bottom lane matchup here tonight. There's a couple of names that you know well if you've been watching the AEL this season. Mystic and Goat Lista have been having some storied performances overall over the course of the season. And for some of their stats, it may not look like it. Like, you can see the CS tip for Goat Lista is maybe not the best. But looking at the KDAs, looking at the CSG, it's just high numbers across the board. And you can tell that they've been having a hell of a time thanks to their supports as well. Obviously, I got to shout out the supports. But in general, they've been playing absolutely incredibly across the course of this season. And I think this is going to be the matchup to watch for tonight's rosters. 
Okay. All right. Well then, will the bot lanes be able to get it done or will they sink and fail? Only one way to find out once we get into game here. Our next stat here, it will be actually um, our team stats here. And just taking a look at these stats, by the way, these are like live stats, you know. Um, we're all just seeing them for the first time today so um no i'm i'm just looking at this right now and like both of these teams are actually pretty even in terms of stats right like that doesn't mean that one is better than the other um per se but at least by stats wise it looks like it's going to be a fairly even game according to the stats now obviously yeah. in game when we start to factor in mental champ selection meta et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whole different ball game. But right now on paper, it's looking like it might go five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everybody here is hoping for at least some good games, if not the whole five game series. But I do want to point out the average game length versus average KDA for both of these teams is something to really think to really look at over the course of this series. ID Supernova has the shorter game time and the higher KDA, which I think means they are playing a little bit more actively on the map. They're hunting down kills a little bit more. They're trying to play more aggressively in places like the side lanes, maybe a little bit of NA ramming here and there. But for the most part, they're playing more actively, more aggressively. They're looking to play a bit long, to play a bit shorter and look to end their games a bit quicker, as opposed to being chillers who are not as... Uh, not as happy to like take the game that short they are happier with a longer game they want to play it out where they're more comfortable with their late game scaling and i'm wondering how that's going to be affected in the draft especially yeah absolutely for sure being chillers as you said looks like they take it just a little bit slower i do want to say though Brittany. i mean based off those stats i i do agree with you but it it's not that big of a diff okay maybe uh, uh, well if you go by math 3.86 you round up to four 3.2 you round up to three so you know what you're right i'm, I'm not even gonna go with a, my counterpoint that, that i had it's just that little bit different that i think it's gonna be stylistically the difference but i am gonna say this though you know you said oh id might be the more aggressive team they might be the the team that actually looks to seek wins or more active so they seek their wins quicker mm -hmm. um so then why did you not predict them to win? PBS, <laughs> show the predictions. Why I, did you not predict them to win then, Brittany? I have Explain been, yourself. I'll be real, I've been a member of the Bing Chillers Faithful for a little bit now. After watching their regular season, and after seeing a lot of their playoff games, I think they've been playing really well despite a lot of their games going to those five game series. I think they are a very strong roster that works really well together. Again, Go List and T Lights in the bottom lane, I think have been arguably inarguably one of the best bottom lanes over the course of this tournament they've been playing so well together and i think the predictions that you're seeing on screen really show it it is a pretty big toss-up as to who's going to take it home tonight i think it's really going to be a matter of these first two games i think if bing chose can get one in they're gonna take it away but if ID Supernova can start to snowball, I mean, they've only dropped one game throughout the entirety of the playoffs. Who's to say they don't just 3-0 it tonight, right? Yeah, possibly. But, you know, I was looking. Once again, I am an emergency caster for anyone out there wondering why I'm even casting this. Because we all know I mainly just do the podcast. Um, but, yeah, I filled in very last minute because I had the availability and I was just like, oh, Hey, yeah, those are my people. Like, I know a lot of the names down there. So why not? I'll cast. I didn't realize it was the finals. <laughs> so <laughs> here I am. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I it was much harder for me to predict who was going to win. Um, so I just went with the plot. Um, and the plot right now is Shady Gecko is currently on his second finals back to back. BKP, I know that name as well. Everyone else, I'm not too sure unless your name changed. So I'm going with the plot. I'm going with the plot difference. I'm going with the plot technique, right? You know? So Shady, looking for a repeat. You know, Filet used to dog him out uh, talking about he was a loser. He didn't win too much. I was I was pulling out a little bit too much heat. I'm not going to do that to my boy Shady. He's a champ now. You know, he's got a couple of chips under his belt. Um, you know, a lot of people called him a vegetarian jungler, but it looks like, um, eating your veggies gives you the strength to win. So I went with ID Supernova. I'm trusting in the gecko. I'm trusting in BKP. And, um, I think 
that they will be able to get it done. And of course, because this is amateur, I don't believe in 3-0s for the most part. <laughs> it's it's because... always just that little bit sloppy. Someone always drops exactly. one or two games somewhere. Exactly. But you never know. Anything is possible. So that is my prediction. 3-1 for ID Supernova. Yeah, and I mean, it's easy to see why you would take that prediction. Like I said, uh, even though in the regular season they did struggle a little bit, throughout the course of the playoffs, one game dropped over the course of three best of five series is a hell of a record to look at. I mean, coming into that, uh, coming into the finals with that sort of momentum, with that sort of energy on your team, and just looking at that and saying, hey, we've got momentum, we've got what it takes to win. We already beat the first seed from our own group, which looking at some of the records across the board and looking at some of the stats might even have been the hardest group of all four of the AEL groups this season. It's not it's not difficult to say that either of these teams would take it home. I'm siding with Bing Chillers because I have been I've been coerced by the Chillers season. I've been I've fallen for their for their propaganda, their fans. It might just be Chillers season this time around, but I could see it going either way. Chillers season. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it is a cool it is a cool phrase, you know. Chiller season. Like you can make that an ad. Civil, you can pay me my royalties later, okay? <laughs> uh, for that soundbite. But anyway, yeah, like building chillers, you know, we'll see if they're able to pull it out. I once again I recognize a few of the names on that roster, Dr. Phil and Chill, known CCS talent, known talent around the amateur scene, um, technics as well. And I've heard a lot of things about Goat Lista. So, you know, obviously with a name like Goat Lista, like you expect this person to be really good in their position as an 80 carry. Um, I mean, carry myself the goat. Exactly. 80 carry as a role in particular as well this season has, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for, has become more relevant once again. Mm -hmm. if, you know, like it feels like you have more agency in the role once again. So AD carries are able to obviously make an impact. Um, so yeah, and the meta is a bit more I don't want to say free, but it's a bit more open, you know. It's opened a lot, up a bit, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm pretty excited to see here. Oh, did you say something? Sorry. I'm pretty excited to see here. Um our game one draft as we're waiting for both these teams to get into the lobby before we start this thing off. Yeah, I think while we wait for the teams to get ready, as it seems like they're just getting into position, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors tonight. Uh, for one of the last times for the AEL winter season, it's coachify.gg. They are a tool that provides uh, that provides for esports coaches and managers. I'm going to just start that one from the top again. It's coachify.gg. HC Sports League of Legends is sponsored by coachify.gg for our winter 2020, winter 2024 split, which is coming to an end. My words are really good tonight. <laughs> they're, a tool, they're, they're a tool for esports coaches that will allow them to manage their teams and players while also finding new students. You can click on the panel located below the stream to check out their website for more information. Thank you so much, coachify.gg, for sponsoring us for this season. Coachify.gg um so yeah Brittany. uh what else do you want to talk about right now while we're waiting for these teams to get into draft um you know what let me ask you a couple of questions because once okay, again okay i'm the emergency caster you've been casting for a majority of the season so you know you're way more comfortable and knowledgeable than me so i'm gonna flip it on you a little bit and ask you a couple of questions just so okay. we can uh you know get some more um predictions and information for our viewers at home so out of both of these teams, which player do you think will be the most pivotal for their teams? Oh, we're getting our draft, so uh, we're going to wait for that timer. Though. But which player do you think is going to be the most pivotal for their team success for both teams? Like, who is the linchpin for their team? I mean, we already highlighted the bottom lane for both of these teams, so I have to say for both sides, it's going to be that bottom lane duo, whether it's uh, Goatlist and T-Lights or it's Mystic and his support. It's just a matter of... Who's going to enable their, their AD carry more? Like you said, uh, for these past couple patches, AD carry pool has becoming a lot more open. It's being a lot more viable to be like flexed around picks and draft. We're seeing things like Kaisa and Saya start to come back into the meta. Zeri Lulu, Ophelios Lulu, Jinx is even being played in pro play mm -hmm. a little bit. So mm -hmm. he's scaling Arcane hyper soon. carries. <laughs> Arcade season two. Can't exactly. wait for it. But that's beside the point. It's uh, it's I think it's we're turning into very much an 80 carry centric kind of meta where 
champions like even though you got gutted smolder it's still a champion that exists in league of legends oh boy. You, have, <laughs> you have champions like zary and jinx that really do require you to draft a whole team composition around them and i think both of these teams have done that very excellently throughout this the entirety of their regular season and through a lot of their playoffs so i think it is going to be very much about these 80 carries we highlighted them before it's going to be on Goat Lista and Mystic to make the plays happen for their teams, or at the very least for their teams to play around them and to unlock them on the map. Thank you, because I was, but I was going to say, so like, I do agree with what you're saying and I hear you, but as we all know, once again, 80 carries are like the little engine that needs time to warm up. So mm -hmm. um, how about this? The first 15 minutes, what do you expect to see each team look to prioritize besides the bot lane? I think if it's not the bottom lane, it's definitely got to be that mid jungle duo because they're going to mm -hmm. be the ones that are able to unlock those 80 carries, allow them to play the game a little bit more smoothly. If you get that first five minute grub fight where you have your mid jungle duo online, you get that fight early, you're able to win it and start snowballing that momentum into the rest of the game. You can play off of that momentum really, really easily. It's just going to be a matter of how good is the communication between your mid jungle? How well are they playing today? Is they in the same headspace of like, okay, we're going to try and 2v2 here to look for a roam bot lane or we're going to look for grubs or we're going to look for dragon and it's one of those like duo roles that people don't talk about as much it really is like bottom lane and support that's like if you're going to duo in solo queue those are the two that you want to do it with but i would argue that mid jungle oftentimes is a lot more important and can really allow you to snowball and carry games a lot further so i think in the early game jungle pathing and mid lane roaming is really where we're going to be seeing a lot of the action do you think a little bit of that died because of the map changes, though, this season compared to, you know, obviously seasons past? I mean, the maps made it a bit, the maps made mid lane much wider and a lot safer, you know? So as much yeah. as, you know, people still talk about that mid jungle synergy, it, I feel like, and I, uh, I feel like mid lane now is more laning prioritized versus roaming prioritized than it used to be seasons past. Yeah, it's no longer just a shove in your wave and look to play for the map kind of role, which it used to be like, when we were seeing Lissandra brought into mid lane, it was just like, okay, you pushed your mid wave out, you know the enemy LeBlanc can't kill you, so you're just gonna walk top or walk bot and try and win the game that way. Or, you know, solo queues, those Katarinas were just like, hey, I'm gonna walk bot lane eventually and get a double kill and then the game's over. Uh, we don't get to see that very much anymore. And honestly, Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. Mid lane being a slightly safer role to actually play for themselves <laughs> and play for a little bit of mid lane dominance is a good thing. But I do think it still means that the junglers have to be wary of how they get into mid lane. And I think for the most part, as much as we've gotten used to the map changes and we are getting like more adjusted to how the map looks different and how it feels, we still haven't discovered everything and all of like the perfect Mm -hmm. gank paths for mid lane rotating paths through mid around mid and like even just on the map in general but i think especially for early game in the mid lane like you said it's a lot safer which means for junglers it's a lot more difficult to make something happen there in the early game without your mid laner making the engage happen first absolutely and very great um analysis there Brady. i really appreciate it um looks like we are getting close to being ready for draft here so my next question for you before we start draft okay yeah i thought we were about to start is um what are you what are some uh priority ugh, what are some picks that you think will be prioritized uh i do really want to see high priority on zeri and jinx and mostly just 80 carries in general like i said earlier it is gonna be a bottom lane center game i feel yeah I think Zeri recently has gotten a lot of buffs. A lot of her items have been changed in very positive ways. She's just like, while other AD carries have been getting nerfed around her, she's just been slowly rising in priority. Like, hey, I'm still Zeri. I still have those Zeri moments where you leave me alone in a team fight and suddenly your whole team is just gone. And Jinx is always Jinx. So she's always going to be something that you have to keep an eye on. So I think the AD carries are going to be the priority for that in the bottom side. And perfect way to segue we're jumping into the draft for game one here we are yes as we have our first set of bands coming in here zach ash nico so far taking off the board nico we have seen actually rise into um rise back into the meta just uh somewhat 
recently i say about two patches ago you know so definitely a pick to take off the board seraphine has literally not left like the meta since last yeah like last year it's been like a year now right at this point maybe a year I'm and not a half sure she ever will truly yeah. yeah like she's just always been a pick now that you have to consider and respect since literally a season ago um there you go brady jinx taken off the board they do not want that in the hands of goat lista there um so now we await being chiller's first pick what are we thinking they're gonna pick on b1 i'm curious there's a lot of potential strong picks here senna is still open and available like i said earlier zary is still open and available if they want to keep that flexibility there's always mid and jungle Whoa. or something like the brand or being chillers that strong early game jungler that's a three-way flex because technically i know riot did buff brand a bit trying to get him back into the mid lane probably not gonna see that though so it's possibly either a jungle or a support brand more than likely i believe that support not support sorry jungle brand uh techniques maybe uh being chiller is pulling out a spicy draft here in game one but the nocturne being locked oh i like see yeah they I, always like, they always flip it at zero because zero lasts for so long in draft lull so you can just sit on that zero for like five seconds and be like i made I'm the sure. caster I'm sin that's sure. true i made the caster sin i forgot to wait till it was locked in <laughs> yeah volley bear is also something that is going to be pretty highly prioritized he's just a good early game jungler i personally don't have too much faith in him as a champion but early game you get a lot done he's very simple to pilot and execute on you run in a straight line in your enemy and it's very difficult for them to play around as i think supernova are also going to lock in a part over their bottom lane with that kaisa who has been so strong recently but the versatility in her build paths yeah i hear volleyball 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 kind of falls <laughs> off a little bit um Whoa. once you get into that mid game part but yeah kaisa being locked in here enabling her to get some of that killer instinct procs from the volley bear from the stun so i hope they look to uh maximize her ability to get through the other team to the back line as quickly as possible as nar and nyla locked in here for the bing chillers so uh definitely we got some melee champs but that means i would look for bing chillers to look for an enchanter um in their next set of picks here which means maybe id supernova will look to take something away that will enable that nyla since you believe the uh you say the bot lane is so prioritized here mm -hmm. uh I for both the, teams yeah i do think one of the best things to pair it up with would have been this tariff that id supernova are going to take away not only does it work well with anila just being able to latch onto her and be like hey Nila, dash forward and you get a free stun enjoy your time uh, it also works really well against her as well as it's a really good counter engaged champion you get to sit back and just watch Nila try and like sprint at you while you're just waiting for the cosmic radiance to tick down but the Nila is a really really interesting locking on this first rotation for being chillers i'm a little surprised to see it grabbed this early on i would have thought for certain if they were going to grab the Nila, they would have paired it with their support yeah. going into that pick order but they really wanted to prioritize the nar for super chase up there in the top side so i'm curious what they're going to do with this early top lane priority and how they're going to play around it yeah absolutely something uh to be mindful of here as we are seeing these mid lane bands come through swain or not swain ari that is ari and cassiopeia so far taken off the table so yeah bkp and dr phil and chill both very stalwart mid laners both very um good mid laners that are able to lane pretty effectively lane pretty well so go ahead and just take some of those picks out of their hands yeah make them a bit uncomfortable and especially uh that b cassiopeia is a very stable bkp pick there mm -hmm. as the mile fight now taking off the board here from id supernova so just one thing yes you want to take away from your opponent that'd be a pretty easy champion to just dive onto a neil onto a brand uh so a nice ban there from the bing chillers as id supernova locks in the yeah. cinder here so the, so far their draft is very purple and blue um <laughs> which I, I like that i like that they're staying to a color scheme color like color that. coordination is important exactly exactly you know uh look color theory is important y'all learn it oh, trust me it will sick. take your fit game to the whole nother level but besides the point um center being locked in there for them tells me that there's going to be a lot of poke a lot of stun they're going to look for a lot of picks before 
um they look to kill someone off here for id supernova as the zillion is now locked in for the bing chillers so um on the other side the chillers right now their draft is looking like more of a um uh zillion's gonna do a lot of poking and speeding up people possibly slowing them down mm -hmm. uh, a lot of poke from the zillion and brand and then when they find their mark or opportunity nyla and zarath will hit the go button to all in and try and clean them up okay zarath being locked that's in here. i really like the zillion zarath here for Nyla. it's gonna allow her to play a little bit psycho in her <laughs> own way just like you know as soon as zillion has level six and he has that chrono shift Mila can just say like all right i'm gonna run forward if my team follows up it eats a win but if they don't follow up i'm kind of in trouble but that's kind of what the the chrono shift is for if you don't have the team follow up it's fine you get a little bit of a you get a little bit of a reset you have the team give them some extra time to jump onto you and give you that support as id supernova are going to lock away that Cassante into the top side guaranteeing that volley bear go into the jungle and across the board some pretty interesting picks the Tarek pick away from id supernova the nila lock in for bing chillers again i think action in the bottom lane is what i'm expecting to see but the early game junglers both on the brand and on the volley bear like I was saying earlier, I think we're going to be expecting to see some action in the mid jungle as well. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, both bot laners want to scale up, want to farm. Um, so we probably won't see a lot of action there early. Pro lots of poke, but <laughs> um, but I don't think we're going to see a lot of action that early into the game unless their junglers come to help them, especially the Kaisateric lane. They're definitely mm -hmm. looking to just sit back and farm until level six. Um, and then that's when they'll look to strike for a kill opportunity on the other end though like you said on the top side of the map expect to see this Cassante try and harass this nar as much as possible i don't know how possible that will be as the mini nar it's, obviously it's does nar. have the range yeah exactly has the, the range advantage over him so Cassante will look to try and play a little bit safe until his jungler comes to help him that volley bear uh so yeah uh, honestly <laughs> id supernova in terms of like draft identity more of a vegetarian safe early 15 20 minute game um you know if shady gecko can make a gank happen they will but for the most part they're looking to just scale expect to see neutrals though be very contested um for uh if you're if you're looking for early game team fights it'll probably be at neutrals that's what i'm trying to say yeah, um, Rex and Dragon, I think, are going to be the way yeah. to go for both of these squads. Uh, I do worry about this Volley Bear in this particular draft. Like you said, a little bit more of a vegetarian style. They're sitting, they're scaling, they're happy to just like get to those level 6, level 11 power spikes and get powerful on those 1 to 2 items. But Volley Bear is a jungler who wants to have that early tempo, early aggression, wants to be playing for the map constantly, but doesn't have a lot that he's going to be able to play for unless he finds a Syndra Sun mm -hmm. in the mid lane, which against Zerath is not going to be super easy. Mm -hmm. In the bottom lane, you don't have a ton of engage unless Tarek has Flash and is able to catch Nilo or Zillion unawares. And this lane is really safe in the early game. I worry for the Volley Bear's efficacy before he starts to fall off and starts to, you know, deal with the ramifications of, you know, being Volley Bear. <laughs> exactly uh one thing i do notice about the bing chillers draft because i feel like we haven't given them as much uh analysis compared to supernova is starting off their draft is a lot more glass cannon um oh, yeah. so they definitely have to be more precise and a bit more careful with the neutral objectives particularly um because once again you have Basically, three and a half champions that can stun you. Cassante, Volibear, Syndra, Tarek. Um, so you got to be very careful at these neutral objectives here. But luckily, they do have lots of pokes. So if they get to the neutrals first, they can definitely poke away the ID Supernova team. So just something for them to be mindful and aware of. But I'm pretty excited for both of our teams here as we wait for the spectator delay now. Hopefully, it doesn't boom on us as we get into game one. So, uh, Brittany... How do you do it here? Do you get, I mean, we already predicted series we've done four, our but do we, do we want to predict about, games? Like, <laughs> we've done our predictions. We've talked about the draft. We're just going to be waiting to hop onto the raft for game one of ID Supernova versus Bing Chiller. So don't go anywhere. After a short break, we'll be right back.
we are back here for game one of Big Chillers Admiral versus ID Supernova. A banger draft into what is hopefully going to be a banger game one. Looking across the board, I'm seeing some interesting choices. Ghosty cleanse on Mila is not something I normally see. Normally it's on something like a Mewnu, but hey, you know what? I'm going to trust the GOAT that he's got figured out in the bottom lane. Yeah, absolutely. We were kind of talking about this. Oh, hold on. We're getting some poke action going on already, Brady. Gecko actually losing a lot in his HP in this early game. That brand pass is putting in the work, giving techniques that electrocute Procus. Andy Chef has rotated over, but I don't know if the level one Cassante is going to do too, too much. Technics is just... I think he <laughs> wanted to put down a ward, but he didn't actually. I'm a little confused about that one, but... You know, Supernova seems to think he put a ward down, so maybe it's just there to bait the sweeper. They'll never know. <laughs> no one will ever know. No one will know. <laughs> but yeah, um, before all the shenanigans started, Brittany, yeah, we were taking a look at the runes here, and like you said, the most interesting one was Goat Lista's The Ghost Cleanse. But like we said off air, I mean, based off their draft, Nyla and um, Goat and nar sorry are the only champions that are pretty much going all in so i mean for goat lista it's pretty much do or die you go in you get the movement speed you can maybe cleanse one or one one stun or you know disabling movement uh spell here and hopefully you can get your ultimate off to set your team up for some success but yeah flash not really the most I mean, Flash is always a good rune, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's for hard Nila, like, it's like, it's like, it's like what's the point? <laughs> yeah, and Ghost is, as some people have argued, a little overtuned. Currently, it is uh, still 15 seconds from when you just press the button to go, and I don't, I don't know if you know this redacted, but 15 seconds in League of Legends is a long time. Mm -hmm. So you can just turn that button on and there's no real punishment for like doing it too early. So you could do, as long as like you're pretty sure uh, a button is like, a team fight is about to start, you push the button and you're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. As we see our first ping on the map here, like you said, Britty, mid jungle duo, gonna look to possibly Gink that Zera at this. Uh, Dr. Gun chill. There's the lightning flash for Trishini. Get Another stun. Go. Not stun, still is for VKP. Oh, come on. That last on. Oh. VKP takes the first blood in the series. You said it, Britty. Jungle mid synergy in the early game because bot lane is going to be a nap. And it happened just like that. Shady Gecko, the vegetarian far jungler, showing his teeth two minutes into the game yeah a nice aggressive flash there from jd Gecko. you're happy to trade flash for flash especially with someone like a who now you know next time you come in for a gank if Cinder if Cinder catches him with the stun it's a little jover for him <laughs> did you say jover a little jover you know <laughs> <laughs> it's dr philly chill it's done once again Oh man, you know, the more I look at ID Supernova's draft, the more I'm just like disgusted by by all the CC they have. Like you see CC in the bot lane, there's CC in the mid lane, CC in the jungle, CC in the top lane. Literally, it's a CC slog. So, um, obviously, I'm not trying to spell doom and gloom for the Bing Chillers just yet. I'm just saying what they have to be very mindful of here and um taking a look at the mini map here it looks like uh bing chillers may look for a counter gink of their own yeah we got technics up there on the top side he's popped the ghost alongside andy champ but i think the man is just dead all of that he's got shield on though he might actually just be able to survive she get me time under tower in the mid lane gonna be forced to walk away he doesn't have the health to tank up that tower for much longer and somehow those gank victims will survive the exchange that is crazy, especially more so for the Cassandra who got away with a sliver, literally a sliver of health. Unfortunately, he did have to expend both his summoners, the ghost and teleport now used to get back into lane. So Cassandra, uh, summoner list, summon, summoner spell list you got it, top you got laner it. here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, shaking the rest off, shaking the rest off. 
<laughs> but yeah, so expect to see Technics look to come up to the top side of the map once again to try and abuse that ID um, top laner there. Yeah, and something I realized as there's been a lot of scrapping, uh, for this bottom lane between Teammates and Goatlista, there is so much XP sharing going on. You have mm -hmm. the Nima passive of whenever she lasts into minion, both of them will get oh, bonus yeah. XP as long as they're standing in the same AoE, and Zillion levels up his allies with extra mm -hmm. XP, so how quickly are they going to be able to hit level 6 as they're already level 5, and Mystic and Spartans are still sitting on 4? Yeah, maybe they big-brained all of us. <laughs> That was actually a um, great, great analysis there, Britty. Um, I totally forgot about the Zillion passive because it's a champion I haven't seen in a while. As we see Supernova here already working on the Cloud Drake, Tights just harassing them a little bit, but Chiller's not too worried about that Drake. It's only Drake number one at this point. Um, so back to normal across the map here, but I wonder who will look to make the first play at the Void Grubs. Yeah, level six is hit for both those top laners, which means that Gnar online for Super Chase. BKP also having that level six, and hey, there's the level six for Gunlist on the bottom side, as Andy Chef just gonna get tossed away as Super Chase is about to lose his Mega Gnar form, so just get that ulti down. The, the cooldown, real talk, is criminally low for how good that <laughs> ultimate is. It's really just gated by how often Super Chase can actually get into Mega Gnar. Yeah, as we see Dr. Phil and Chill placing a ward there on the river. It got some pings from Shady Gecko for the Void Grubs. Um, TP now used by Super Chase on that top lane. Nar back to face his enemy in the Cassante. Technics We're looking to get some of these grubs, but Shady Gecko has smelt him out. Will we have ourselves a little kerfuffle here First on night. the top side of the map? It's looking like it might be a yes. Gecko and supernova yeah They're just gonna give it just happy to, yeah i think he's happy to just have smote away one guarantee that there's not going to be any sort of six grubs going over he knew super chase had that priority in the top side so with nar potentially coming up to mega pretty soon they don't know the full cooldown on that ultimate just yet it's about two thirds done already but you don't want to risk a fight over just these early three grubs it's not mm -hmm. going to be the most impactful this early into the game as long as you can deny the guarantee deny the six and if you can get and contest to the next three you can deny five which means no little void mites hitting your turrets and <laughs> overall you're pretty happy about that one go lista here Stun. playing a bit brazenly right in the face he's, of spartans and mystic without his yeah, support he's, got he's just fine you know Mila, you know yeah just a defensive stance and can't get on attack she's pretty good yeah absolutely so I, I guess that does give him a bit more agency to play a bit more in your face, but he needs to be careful about when he does those um, brazen plays there. And there's some more experience coming through, uh, Brady. Goat Lista now level seven to Spartans level five and Mystics level six here. So uh, big brain played in the bot lane so far. Now, if only they could, get, once they get some more items on there, if nothing else happens here, they might start looking to capitalize on this level advantage. Has to be really careful here. Oh no, he should know. Nearby. There was no auto coming out from the brush, so he's gonna finally put down that ward. A nice Gnar into the wall to get to. He wants to just go for the kill on the anti shaft though. The wall, the Gnar comes in, the brick Wait. comes through, but he can't find the damage. It gets just a little bit too tanky on Cassante. He's able to walk away from the play. And now BKP it's just one super chasing Shady Gecko, but BKP comes in to grab the He'll pick up the second kill, but he's on the bottom side Spartans trying to get that oh. cause ingredients down. He'll be a little bit tankier, too tanky for Goat Vista and T-Lates to deal with. And the ulti's burned in the bottom side, that Apotheosis out for Goatlista alongside both summoners. But it's ending up in a favor of the ID Supernova side again. And I just want to say, I do like the fact that Bing Chillers tried to make a play on Andy Chef up there. I thought, for some reason, I thought the Boomerang would suss out Shady Gecko, but I guess not. So therefore, um, Super Chase wasn't aware that the jungler was there um, and he couldn't back off in time. So therefore, he was then punished. Luckily, Chef was able to get out due to BKP roaming up there and taking a kill. That's a 2-0 Syndra now. Um, if I can just get a shard check on the Syndra so far, because remember, she does scale with those shards as well. So on currently she is getting there at 10 minutes that's not bad i know 60 yeah. is her next uh active point but technics is gonna pop that ghost in the mid lane bkp he does get slowed he's gonna be forced to flash away as now on the bottom side t lights she's gonna eat the stun i think spartans is just 
zoning him off, but he might be zoning a little bit too hard, because there's that right of the arcane spark. He's going to be forced to flash yeah, away. Shots land, but it's not enough damage onto this Tarek early on, but some cooldowns burned for IDS. Gecko scared me there. I thought he was going to go in when he saw his bot lane backing up. I was like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> but luckily, <laughs> I guess uh, he also recognized that was not the play to do. And luckily for uh, Spartans, only his flash blown. So just something to be mindful of as the next Drake is spawning in 30 seconds here. It will be an Ocean Drake. So neither a Cloud Soul or Ocean Soul for our players here in game one. Now, if I know the AEL, we love our Chemtech Souls here, as obviously it is one of the most impactful and most well-utilized souls in the whole game. So obviously, I think in our first game of the finals, it's got to be a Chemtech Soul, surely. You know, if that happens, that will be very hilarious, because then it's like, huh, I wonder if Riot is reading the... Uh, the IDs of these players and realize, okay, these guys play every week at this day. Like, let's make it somewhat consistent or something, right? You know, that, that's too much for a small indie company. What am I talking about here? Yeah, I mean, sometimes they can't even get the spectator, right? As Andy Chef is going to get a little ooh, edge to engage here on the bottom side. Bathios is coming through from Goat Lissa. It's going to force a flash out of Mystic. Tactics was in a position to potentially punish. I think down there. I think Golista engaged a bit too quickly, uh, but I mean it's There's still a net positive for them. Oh, sorry. Maybe Chef, maybe trying to go under tower here on the top side. Super Chase is getting aggressive with him, but ulti traded for ultis. It's just health bar actually in favor of the Cassante. The champion is a hell of a drug. Yeah. Yeah, so like I was saying, I think the bot lane trade was a net positive for them because they were able to blow Mystic's flash, um, and therefore... Uh, top lane. Yep. Super Chase may be in trouble. He's going to get the He's Hops going to jump out of his own tower range, but I do not think he's going to be escaping this one. They're going to try and donate the kill over to Andy Chef, I think, and give him that last hit. It's, <laughs> he's just being walked up, but <laughs> Shady Gecko finally tired of this annoying little rat jump in front of him, so he's just going to take a bite out of crime. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're trying to give it to the Cassante, but Cassante Dante does not have the uh, enchanted boots there, giving him <laughs> not as much movement speed as Gecko, unfortunately. So, yeah, like you said, Gecko took a bite out of crime and put the Euro back into the gray screen as Technix is now poaching some jungle that doesn't belong to him. But he'll be A-OK -okay and just retreat back to his base. Yeah, and with Technics being spotted on the bottom side, that's just going to mean a guaranteed three grubs off that second spawn for ID Supernova. Not only do they deny the five, they get four themselves. So if they're able to get some pressure on these turrets, if they're able to take some plates in the next minute or so, got to be pretty happy with how that outcome went. Yeah, absolutely there, uh, Brady. Sorry, I was clearing my throat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 12 minutes, 13 minutes into the game, some play players are finally getting some uh, some gold here off the chip damage from the towers. Oh, yeah, go list the bottom side. We use that Apotheosis on the Mystic. We'll immediately get that killer instinct out. Cleanse. The cleanse is out. There's that Chrono Ship. The exhaust is low for Spartans just to say, get the heck off my ADC. It's just a lot of summoners being burned every time on the bottom side, but nobody dies. I like I like I like Golista what he's doing on this Nyla. I, I I like what I'm seeing. Obviously no one has died yet, but I like the combat we're seeing in the bot lane. So far though, it feels like it feels like an unstoppable object versus immovable wall. The immovable wall being the ID ID supernova bot lane and the unstoppable object being obviously being chillers. So maybe one of these will give us the um Nara and Cassante continue to battle up here in the top lane. Just a repeat, though, of the harass. We see lots yeah. of pings, though, now coming out on the top side of the map. BKP and Gecko. Looks like Gecko working on the Rift Herald now, I believe. Um, hopefully, BKP can keep the Xerath in lane, uh, and which will allow Gecko to just get that Rift Herald unnoticed. So for the time being, I think he should be fine as we see Technics on the bot side of the map. There might be a potential dive here onto the Kaisa. Yeah, Kaisa does have to be very careful. You can see as Liz spotted out onto that war, they're immediately just going to move away from their tower, pop some vision down. They do not want to get caught out by this brand who they've actually done a pretty effective job of keeping behind in this game, despite the fact that I say that as he's up like 40 CS, I'm going to justify this. As Brain is someone who wants to get these kills in the early game, wants to pick out some greedy members, pick up some people who are still balling as Andy Chef is going to whiff entirely on the top side. Super Chase is just happy. Gecko and BKB are here, though. Out, but 
Gecko is here. He's got that Stormbreaker as well. Nice stun under oh, the tower. No. It's about to be turned off. Yikes. Stun under Wait. the tower. BKB is up here yet again. Oh, oh power. <laughs> says goodbye and Nar. Bullied again in the top side. BKB picks up his third. So, you know what's funny, Britty? I mean, I still believe you that, like, as we get later into the game, these teams will prioritize their bot lane. But the early game has been all about the top oh, yeah. side of the map and a little bit of the mid but mainly the top side like they have decided we are planting a tent onto super chase and that's where we're gonna live and you know what at the same time sorry one last thing at the same time bkp benefits because he has three, all he has three kills <laughs> he's gotten nearly every single kill out of these top side exchanges it's a win-win on the on the bottom side it's just like hey we're playing kaisa Tarek. As long as Bing Chubbers don't get, like, super far ahead, and granted, they have taken a turret. There is a, uh, I, what I thought was a sizable goldie is actually a slight, like, 100 gold in favor of Mystic. Uh, uh, as long as Bing Chubbers aren't getting, like, super far ahead, and the Diva has not. She has not been able to play this game very mm -hmm. much at all over the course of the game. You can see every time you pay that bot lane, it's Go List uh, trying to pop and engage with Apotheosis, trying to make something happen, but engaging versus Tarek Kaisa is just such a chore. How do you actually manage this? Hang on, Andy uh -oh. Chef, I don't know if that's the last game you wanted. The teleport's coming through. Uh -oh. Super Chase as well. It looks like they're trying to, like, all in on uh -oh. this pick. Super Chase has the Mega. Spartans is over the wall. He's gonna get noticed, but Super Chase doesn't throw the Gnar on him just yet. Wants to save that one as this dragon is up in just a couple of seconds. They're trying to save that cooldown for this objective. Question, I wonder ID Supernova is going to answer is how bad do you want this Drake? It's only Drake number three. It is a mountain Drake. Uh, they've just launched a Rift Herald here. So they're now forcing Bing Chillers to make a decision as Sintra. Ooh. Oh, Gecko okay. forced to flash away as BKP does a little bit of driving school there. Has to lose his flash actually in that mid lane yep. to make sure he doesn't get caught by the that members of the big oh, killers. Oh. <laughs> in the meantime, I guess Supernova have managed to get themselves priority back on this dragon. They're going to start clearing away some of the vision. Here? <laughs> it's a bit of a roundup out here as big killers will finally reclaim themselves priority on this river. Andy Chef going to eat a bit of poke, but the calls of Blitz split here. Super Chase and the bottom side wants to start the dragon but technics is happy to just continue to lay down poke he wants to play aggressive into this front line and uh, chip down some of their hp before they engage. they're giving it but instead it's just gonna be yeah like you said id supernova saying nah we don't need this dragon we're just gonna walk away and gift it over to big chillers yep absolutely and like i said earlier in the um draft there Brittany, remember Goat Lista uh, being chillers, if they get to the neutral objectives first, they can poke the ID Supernova team out and away from these neutrals, and that's exactly what they did. So ID Supernova for them, if being chillers are already there, you're gonna have to basically commit, okay? Go in with the Tarek ult, start the fight off, because you you have a little oh, bit of poke with the Syndra, but Syndra and Tarek Ooh. are like your only poke. Kaisa's not building AP, or she is she is building AP. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I like. She's doing oh. the uh, the LS build where you go man immune into Luden's companion into Crepes Bloom. You get your Q evolve and your W evolve, and mm. you're just so damned annoying by pressing W from halfway across the screen. It does okay, so much damage. Then, then never mind. Then my throw that entire point that I was making away and wait till we're about 25 minutes into the game because then it's gonna be a poke <laughs> fest <laughs> and neutral objectives between both teams. But once again, the easier point for id supernova will be when they decide oh, to go all in like now jd gecko wants to find goat list he's got that mafiosis though plenty of safety on this knee lane is gonna go all out trying to get some punish down the cosmic radiance will keep them safer from the right of the arcane for now but amy shed now maybe the one in trouble it's a nice q3 onto two members of being chillers and once again somehow everyone survives i want some blood yes technics kill him no spartans has splash he's gonna live <laughs> Um, that dur that remember when they did the durability patch? It looks like uh, it's yeah. man. It looks like it's really coming in strong here for <laughs> both of these teams since no one was able to go down. But the gold lead is still about 2k in favor of ID Supernova. I'm seeing some uh, opinions in the chat there as well saying if ID play like they have brains, this should be their win here. And honestly, I gotta agree with them. I mean. As the game gets later, later and longer, it's just going to be a bit harder for the Bing Chillers to, in my opinion, uh, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with ID Supernova. 
Getting good clips here for the punish. Technics is here as well. It's a 2v2 on this bottom side of the map. BKB is just going to look for the burst. Unleash power into the jungler. Goodbye, Technics. Hello, Fed Syndra. BKP has four. Yeah, BKP with a 4 0 KDA now. Looking at that gold on this Syndra. Oh my goodness. 8,400 to 6,100 compared to his counterpart. How many stacks does the Syndra have as well? Dr. Phil and Chill. Now the next victim here for BKP. He's looking for that. Another chance to poke. Will not be able to get it. Um, but yeah, at this point here, ID Supernova, they're doing pretty well. Let's just play, you know, play a bit smart, bit safe. I think as of right now, this game is theirs. Um, you know, this game is definitely in their favor. Being chillers are not out of it just yet, but it is slightly ID favored here in game one. As Baron is now up and Andy Chef sees T lights by himself, but he does have that speed up. Yeah, Andy Chef is going to be fine here, but I do agree. I think the ID Supernova comp is just that little bit easier to execute on. They mm -hmm. have their simple go buttons in Volley Bear ult and in just Tarek saying, hey, I'm going to ult. When they start the fight, we're going to win as BKP already has a death cap as his second item. This center is so strong, man. I'm trying to think about how any of the members of Big Killers actually get access to the Cinder. How can they, like, find her to get a pick on her? And aside from Super Chase having, like, a godlike flank TP where he can wait for Syndra to use stun and then jump on her, toss her into the team. I'm not really seeing a way. The lag. <laughs> Did you say lag? I'm not seeing a way that they can like uh, actually manage to get an engage on her. Oh, sorry. I was like, wait, we're lagging where? I was so confused. I'm sorry. All right, so Mountain Drake coming up in about 40 seconds here. Obviously, we know both teams really want it. Um, you know, for the side of Bing Chillers, it would help giving them a bit more durability since they are more of a glass cannon draft. And obviously, for the side of ID, you have some tanky boys over there, so it'd be really great to just have even more stats. Oh my Ooh, god, Dr. Phil and Chill is nearly dead. There comes that second W from Mystic. He's got that Luton's Companion in inventory, so that Ooh. W is evolved. We're gonna start seeing some healthy chunks come out of the members of Bing Chillers. Now the impetus really is on this Bing Chillers composition to hit their go buttons and find and engage before they lose all of them from Mystic as just Void Seeker after a Void Seeker lands. He's finally gonna miss one and force that on the longer cooldown, but Technics is already one HP. Control of the Dragon Pit is already in ID Supernova's pocket. I don't think there's a way that Brand can get into this pit and try and find his tail. Pope Kaiser is back, it. baby. Burn on the wall, Smite comes through. Shitty Gecko will find it. There's already the Arcane. Just looking for some damage over the top, but like you said, Pokeice is back. Technics, hang on. Ooh, Baby ooh. has found her. She's going to have be forced to flash away and dash she, away. Super Chase wants behind. to find his engage. Shady Gecko now picking out Super Chase, forcing him away off of that blast count. Nadish having to be tied up in a 1v4. A nice ooh, unstoppable. Kings no. <laughs> through the NAR. That's what Shady wants to continue the fight in earnest, but it's a nice W there from Goat Listen to keep him away. But Nadish, you see him on the bottom of your screen, starting to flank. Oh he wants God. to find these members with <laughs> chunks again. And again, oh. Mystic just does so much damage on this Kaisa. Are they going to Baron? They do, might. Do they Baron this? Or, uh, I mean, Super Chase is up in 20 seconds. They know he doesn't have TP. Andy Chef can do a decent job zoning yeah. off the members. And even with this AP ish build, Mystic does a good amount of damage to the Baron just because of Kaisa's passive. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, Brady. I don't even know if I have a chance to talk completely about that dragon fight because we have another one right here. So first, uh, he has that chrono chip on him very early from t -Lets, just making sure that Goatlista can't get engaged on by Andy Chefs. The Baron's so gonna get lower and lower. Yeah, Technics doesn't have his Ooh. overall alt. Smite's available for both junglers. It is gonna go over to Shady Gecko now. That coffee is Terrible. coming down on top of oh Andy Chefs just to make sure that the he ID doesn't draft. Draft die. Draft nice stun, <laughs> but it's just unstoppable for Andy Chefs. They're gonna be able to walk away with all five members poked be damned damage be damned i need supernova are just too tanky um they yeah they they beat three the nyla and then and then id took the Tarek. i i i uh that was a great that was a great decision in their draft
great decision. Mm -hmm. um, Shady Gecko, I'm sure he uses that app of his, that program of his, because I know he's like the draft coach. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's always talking about it. He's always... <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he had some coachify lessons who knows but yeah i'm really loving this id supernova draft um from two fights ago when they were fighting over that mountain drake um the poke is online here for id supernova it's gonna just be so much harder for being killers to walk up they need to try and <laughs> obviously poke out being ID Supernova as much as possible, but it's so much harder when you have a four Sendra in your face and a Kaiza is throwing W's from literally halfway across the map. So yeah, I mean, how do you engage into a fed Syndra and into a Taric and into a Kaisa who, while not being hyper fed, is sitting on two and a half items? She's building full poke. She's gonna press W on you, and before you even get to engage, you're half HP. Yeah. And now with that Baron, I really liked how they took that Baron. They thought they were gonna fight. Oh, it's BKP, we'll have to flash to Iroplasm. It's gonna do a yeah. little bit of damage on the BKP, but he doesn't have enough burn to one yeah. shot this Syndra just yet. It is just that the injured Ryan Lies protecting, so not a real like huge amount of damage, it's just a lot of like annoying burn over time. Absolutely. And as we take a look at the gold lead as well, about a 5k gold lead in favor of ID Supernova here. They're slowly whittling down these towers. Andy Chef might have to be a bit aware. He, he knows something's going on because his team has backed up. So the map has started to disappear. Like, okay, where are the rest of the chillers at? Uh, I got to make sure I stay warm. Don't let the chiller seasons catch me. And at this point now of the game, I honestly... I feel like for ID Supernova, all they need to do is just keep poking, especially at these neutral objectives, then look for an, use that Terracle either offensively or defensively, and just rinse and repeat until you get to the Nexus. For yeah. <laughs> being chillers, uh, it's a much harder road on- Yeah, to, speaking of a much harder road, goodbye, Dr. Phil and Chill. A second ago, he was alive and no longer as BKP is a level 16 Syndra, and it turns out she does quite a bit of damage. Super Chase and Andy Chef are gonna trade on the bottom lane. There gets to a certain point in every game where one team has a lead, where it becomes not about how can the team that's losing find a win, but it becomes more about like, how can the team that's ahead find a way to lose, really? Yep. Yep. Andy Chef is gonna go all in the bottom lane. Look for oh. the solo kill on a Super Chase! Over. Super top Andy Chef gets it done as he's gonna get collapsed on by three members of Bing Chillers. I think they're gonna be able to find their first kill here, or at the very least they should as Mila will grab her first of the game, but in the meantime, their base is being decimated. Yeah. Um, BKP is literally, nobody can see him in a 1v1 at this point as more fights continue. Oh, there's that right of the arcane. Look for the damage of the sport. Oh. Take out the snipe before the cause of gradients comes down. Now Shady Gecko, we're still trying to run away, but it is a Leandri's brand. He's gonna be forced to use that ulti to get over the wall and get out of Technic's range. The low health brand doing wonders in that fight. They managed to keep their own turret alive. They don't lose that inhibit at the top side either. So, Mystic, what are you doing? Keep it alive. Mystic, I think, is just happy to play a little bit aggressive here, look for some poke. He's playing uh, no vision, though. It's a little bit yeah. dangerous, but it looks like Pink Chillers are really going to be aggressive onto this dragon. But in the meantime, Shady Gecko and BKP are just happy to push away at this base. Absolutely. Mystic over here trying to poke. So we have a TP coming through, but they've already taken the Drake. This Kaisa. Oh, there's that. Gets over the wall again with the killer instinct. Nor tries to get her back, but it's a huge push from Andy Chef, keeping his team safe. EKP finds their sixth kill of the game, as now the big killers are forced onto the retreat. Andy Chef wants to chase them down, but the poke and the damage is just a little bit too high. They're gonna be forced away. Big killers, they managed to get the dragon, but losing your top leader for it and losing priority on the next objective is not gonna feel very great. Dread it. Run from it, Gecko still arrives. And ID Supernova are just scorching all over the chillers right now. They, what Mystic did was a really, that was some nice trickery. Cause I thought he used this killer instinct, but that was his flash. And then he used the killer instinct to position himself back towards his team. When the chillers thought they had an easy kill on the AD carry and that completely fumbled the rest of their um tactics there and yeah they just lost the fight so now 
<laughs> chillers um they just find themselves at a the the hill is just getting steeper and steeper here and i'm finding i'm finding it very difficult to speak on other ways how the chillers can get back into this game um without sounding too biased in favor of id supernova here <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like what I, it's like what I mentioned earlier. I think at this point the game truly is in IV Supernova's hands entirely, and it's going to be about the mistakes they make and how big. Blown in the side versus BKP. I don't think okay, you're gonna yeah, make nah. that one work. He got close, and if Shady Gecko wasn't there with his Knight's Mount, maybe that's a lot closer. But. Mm. Nah, a little bit too fast. That type of play tells me everything I need to know. The Chillers have. Basically, they know this game is a wash. I'm gonna say it now. I don't. I don't have shame saying that this game is a wash. Game one <laughs> definitely is going to ID Supernova, and that was um, Goat List of Limit Testing, trying to see if like, hey, I can kill the Syndra. That is that is a what is that a five zero Syndra, a six zero Syndra with a Rabadons and a Void Staff. You are not him, blood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got he got very close. I think with some of the damage redu redu uh, reduction from that jubilant veil, there was a potential there to find that one v one. The apotheosis getting a lot of healing done, and again, if Shinigeto wasn't there, that's maybe a one v one. And for how far apart these two are in terms of how fed they are, that's a little disgusting. I don't know if that should be legal. Yeah, absolutely. And at this point now. ID Supernova with their second Baron, barreling down the mid lane, BKP able to side lane on his own, while Andy Chef plays Boogeyman in the jungle here. Peekaboo. Yes, he likes to spot him out on the sweep, just throw the bomb at him and say, like, hey, stay, you stay away, you get away from my team, but, you know, Zillion as an old man can only be, like, so scary, whereas... Andy Chef is a level 17 Cassante, and I don't know if you've heard the the Showmaker copy pasta recently, but that champion is very strong as BKP is maybe on the share of the side lane. Andy Chef is gonna do a decent job protecting him, but there's that right in the arcade. Damn. BKP, the lane is putting in work. He's gonna take a lot of damage, but Dr. This Bill is still, a 2v5, by the way. He doesn't have the damage. Andy Chef in the meantime, taking the four members onto the front line. Actually, 1v5, really. Giving <laughs> damn. As the rest of the members of IV Supernova are just gonna start sieging down the base. They've got Baron in their inventories. They're just happy to walk down these objectives. There goes that first inhibitor. The second one should be soon to follow. Oh, and like you said, gosh. I think this one is going to be in the pockets of ID Supernova. As, Damn, Mystic does a lot of damage. Okay, so since we know the game is practically in ID Supernova's hand here, let me ask you this, Britty, so we can get ready for our game two draft. Uh, what do we change for Bing Chillers? Um, <laughs> maybe you don't let BKP get hyperfed in the mid lane. I don't know. You just don't give him a bunch of kills in the early on. It's... <laughs> I don't know. Like in the early game, it was really Shiny Gecko just getting him fed as that first Nexus turret will go down. The second one's soon to fall, oh, and sheesh. yeah, it's a nice chance to have to engage from Super Chase, but he's gonna be popped into that Resurrect immediately. Shady Gecko is gonna slam down on top of T-Lights with that Stormbreaker. And I, Supernova, in what is a boringly dominant fashion, are gonna take game one. ID versus ID finals, baby. Not really, <laughs> but. Supernova is here to avenge their fallen ID brethren. And you know what? I actually like the play on words. Supernova being chillers, chiller season, fire, ice. Okay, okay. He's cooking, he's cooking. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? But let's uh, analyze the game here, right? Honestly, the only thing I'm going to say about the chillers draft is if you're going to draft Glass Cannon, I feel like you need to be more active way earlier in the game, but that's kind of hard to do with, I mean, not really. You have a Nyla Azerak. You have so much poke. I feel like Technics should have tried, um, cut his losses, right? Like Super Chase is being capped. Whatever. Sorry, bro. I'm going to go get Zerath and Nyla fed, okay? Sometimes you just got to take the L. Somebody yeah. has to be weak side. Exactly. So, like... I think he should have cut his losses and looked to try to get his more pokier champions ahead like BKP and um, Gecko were doing. Well, BKP was more like cleaning up the kills that were happening on the top side of the map, but a win is a win, right? <laughs> so yeah. just something I think that chillers need to think about going into their game to draft if they're going to do something like this.
Yeah, I do think, like you said, the sort of glass cannon draft is a bit concerning coming from the Bane Chillers. They wanted to play that early game aggressively. They wanted to get those leads, but like you said, it was Shane Gecko on the ball here. That first game in mid lane, flash trading with Dr. Phil and Chill and just making that lane feel near unplayable for the Zareth as BKP just picked up kill after kill after kill and got farther and farther ahead. Mm hmm. It was a disgusting look for ID Supernova as they take the win in game one. We're going to cut through a short break while we hop into the draft for game two. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more AEL finals action. for game two of id supernova versus being chillers emerald i'll say it again it was a boringly dominant game one not a lot of blood but a lot of dominance from id supernova as they took away game one and we're hopping straight into the draft here for game two absolutely and looks like we do have a bit of different sides being chillers electing to be on the red side here so id supernova on the blue side um and look at these bands here. Zach and Kaisa taken off the board. Nico Twitch so far for the Supernova squad. So the picks definitely are changing, at least for Supernova, based on side so far. Twitch was not banned last time. Neither was the Gragas. Um, Zach and Kaisa. Kaisa. The Kaisa pick. I want. I mean, yeah. yeah. I wonder if Kaisa some of these. I, I wonder if some of these are reactionary bands or just more because of the side, you know? Like, that's one thing I kind of like, I'm just like, okay guys, is it really a problem or you just don't want to play against it that bad? I or mean, I, was your draft, much, you know? We saw how much damage Mystic did in that game. We saw the amount of poke that he was able to do in that mid game. That Kaisa build is these gods being. But with the banning of the Kaisa and the Volibear, that means Jinx is fully up and available and it is going to be picked away by ID Supernova on the blue side. Oh. But the red side, 
one of the highest win rates in the AEL caught that one from the podcast. It's Sarah Queen, CEO of the LCS, alongside Rex side, which I think is gonna head up to the top side for Super. I was like, that's what I was wondering. I was like, is this a top side, top Rex side? Because we haven't seen Rex side in literally like a year and a half. Like I haven't seen this champion actually in a really long time. Um, but all of a sudden, we saw it being played in the LEC on the top lane. So I. I, I am going with that notion right now that it is going to be a top lane Rek'Sai. Uh, as we've seen the Ornn hover here, actually now the Ornn locked in. Excellent, hey, excellent. Can. Yes, if you're going to draft a Jinx, you got to make sure you have um, her Secret Service detail in order to protect yeah. her. You, if you are drafting Jinx on your first pick, you have to make sure that every single other pick in your draft is around this Jinx, whether it is another carry threat to make sure that she is not only focused in terms of backline threats or you want a beefy meatball who's going to keep her safe in the front line life braun for instance and i do also like this braun as a pick away it makes sure that the orn doesn't have someone who's just going to block away that mm -hmm. ulti on the bottom side of the map braun is one of those soft counter picks in the, the bottom side just to make sure that the orn doesn't let his ult get through now, talking about it earlier, Jinx and Zeri are kind of really good right now. Bing Chillers currently are hovering that Zeri. I think it would pair really nicely with the Seraphine, either in need or in support, just to make sure that she's folding and able to run around the map at yeah. lightning speeds. Remind me, I know Braum Shield blocks a lot of things, but does it block the Seraphine uh, root? Uh, the root and the ult, I believe, as it is acting pretty much as a wind wall. It doesn't yeah, okay. block fully the damage, but the projectile yeah. will stop. Okay, that's what I thought. So yeah, like you said, soft counter pick for sure. Um, as the next set of bands are coming in, so I guess with the Zeri being locked in, we can eliminate Seraphine ADC, which means it's most likely support, but it could be Seraphine mid lane. Um, but yeah, Zeri Seraphine, <laughs> another alluring lane that the Supernova <laughs> squad might have to deal with here as these second rounds of bands are coming in. J4 being taken off the board here by the Chillers. Ari once again will not be in the hands of Phil and Chill. Uh, that champion has a lot of mobility. Ari has been a pretty stable pick uh, throughout the meta here. Ooh, Aurelian Soul and Aurora taken off the board hey. as well. So no scaling mages. For our last three um, bands there was one more <laughs> as the cinder is gonna be picked away by as I said there. That. they are not gonna allow bkb to have that one again and i mean honestly after his performance in game one wait but cassio p is shocked. open though cassio p like you said in game one a bit of a bkp special is fully up and available i don't know how that matchup is into cinder i feel like that's not gonna be the most fun time throughout the laning phase but there's a difference between comfort and viability Right now they're hovering that victor as you said that there were no scaling mages left but i've seen two on my screen right now <laughs> victor versus cinder a classic mid lane matchup it is just a matter of you know make it to late game get two and a half three items and hope that you do more damage than the what other is guy. this season 12. <laughs> Jinx and Victor, or in the top lane. ID Supernova have said we don't want to fight at oh all. My God. Game. Please lock it in. Scale, Please scale, and scale some more. As they're gonna lock in the Sejuani as well. Man, I'm telling you, I like Supernova's draft so far. I mean, good drafts for both to game so far. Um, so let's see what Bing Chillers are going to counter pick here. But yeah. Syndra being locked in here for Phil and Chill. That'll be a very interesting matchup, the Victor versus Syndra, especially given, you know, that BKP did disgusting war crimes on that champion in game <laughs> one. So Phil and Chill here, your prerogative is to either match or at least do more than what your opponent did in game one. As the Lilia being locked in here last for the Chillers, lots of AP on the Chillers side here. And I'm, uh -oh. I'm looking at how Lilia fits into this comp well. You know, I see the poke between the Cinder, Lilia, Seraphine. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking more, of once again, about not the poke, but more about the neutral objectives, the team fights, right? Like, how, what is the Chiller's identity in team fights? Yeah, it's... 
again, I think once you've drafted a champion like Zary or Jinx, your team is sort of centered around this pick. I think Lilia's Sleep is a great heal and engage tool to make sure that Zary is allowed to charge up a little bit. The longer the team fight, the better. Seraphine has some decent follow-up to that Lilia CC and can be the source of engage as well. Syndra, as we saw BKP doing game one, is a great side link threat, as well as just having a decent amount of priority in that mid lane to be able the ability to like shove and roam and look for 1v1s. But versus this ID Supernova comp, I'm thinking about how they actually get access to the back line outside of like Rek'Sai Tunnel Flash or Lilia Flash <laughs> Sleep. And if your entire engage is, you know, truncated on the point of like, you need to have a flash to get into the back line, maybe it's not the best source of engage in the book. And, um, well, on the opposite end of that, sorry, Gecko has three champions that can give him his permafrost proc. The Orn, or three, I'm sorry, two, Orn and the Brom, right? So, mm -hmm. once again, protect the Jinx and the Victor. You're, you're probably going to get yourselves another victory here, but obviously, if these champions fall behind, it's going to be that much harder because Orn, as we know, is... Um, you got three tanks. You got three tanks and two damage dealers. Like it's, so, it's a very standard League of Legends. Yeah, exactly. Front to back team fighting around some hyperscaling carries. It's as classic League of Legends as League of Legends can get. And Jinx is certainly one of the best ones to do it with. I think it's gonna be if Ivy Supernova can make it past that 25, 30 minute mark where they have Jinx on three items, she's not far behind. She's able to navigate team fights. It should look pretty easy for them to execute on. I think. Again, the Bing Choker's composition is harder to execute and maybe a little bit more difficult to play, but it's not unplayable. Exactly, and that I like that point that you made, particularly about, once again, the big S word, scaling. So one thing, same thing once again, that we need to see the Chilliers do that they, in theory, wanted to do in game one. You drafted a semi, eh, actually, you drafted a glass cannon build once again. Is Rex I think? Rek'Sai and, and these days is full tank, like Sunfire okay. into Spirit Visage, not even a single damage item, just tank. Okay, so you got one tank and four glass cannons. Once again, please be proactive, be aggressive in the early game, particularly on that Syndra. I want to see the BKP treatment transferred to Dr. Phil and Chill. Get that Syndra ahead, just so that way you can have the same thing that your opponents had in game one. Yeah, we want to see aggression in the early game from the junglers, but we want to see scaling overall for the laner. So we might be in it for the long haul. We're going to take a short break while we wait for the spectator to lay a lineup. When we get onto the ramp for game two of ID Supernova versus Bing Chiller Emerald. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. We're here for game two of Iridescent Dawn Supernova versus the Bing Chillers Emerald. After game one was a slow and dominating game, we're hoping for, well, I say hoping for a faster game, but I'm looking at Zeri and Jinx and Victor and Syndra, and I think we might be in it for the long haul of this game, too. Oh, wow. Shady didn't buy a pot. He only got his jungle pit. That's sometimes the meta, depending on how safe your clear is. I don't think he's expecting Technics to especially look to invade him in the yeah. early game. So he's got the green pet. He's happy. Like his, got like his team is gold. Good. <laughs> Sit back, farm up, doesn't have to do He's investing much. into his future. <laughs> <laughs> League of Legends Investment Bank. Rift Investment Bank. <laughs> It's like, those, uh, it's like those super guys you see on TikTok who are like, no, yeah, dude, you got to like invest in this particular coin. I swear it's not a pump and dump scheme. It's really good. It's going to go to the moon. Can I interest you, Britty, in some gecko coin? Oh, gecko coin. Please tell me all about it. <laughs> oh, well, gecko coin is the newest cryptocurrency on the on the rift. You know, um, it's named after our Lord and Savior, vegetarian jungler, Shady Gecko. You know, he started off in the woes of the platinum league all right let me get back to <laughs> let's get serious let me look at these rooms and stuff y'all don't want to hear me troll yeah um, overall i think most of the things are pretty normal i think the only like real big shout out is t lights having heal and spartans having exhaust it's just that difference in the bottom lane matchup but overall it's one combat summoner for both sides it's teleports for solo laners it's smites for junglers it's nothing special <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Twitch chat. Someone said 100% putting my coin into shady coin. <laughs> putting my life savings into shady coin. <laughs> uh, I know that you have been, uh, you've been out, of, out of lead for a little bit. I don't know how much you know about Rek'Sai Top currently, but she got uh, some changes a couple of patches ago that have made her a very mm -hmm. disgusting pick as Mystic and Spartans will get that level. Please tell me about it because I actually don't know. All I saw, I only saw Rek'Sai Top once, and that was actually when I was at work. And I was yeah. I put it on a YouTube. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you are basically farming grasp off of your W come up, you get the knock up, you get the auto with your Q and you walk away. Because the fury generation that you have on your mm -hmm. passive now gets you yeah. so much healing back. Because you can already see there, like just from one trade, he gets 120 health back. It's essentially a potion that mm -hmm. crops faster if you stack that fury up to full. She's and the so fury gives you empowered uh, damage on your abilities, correct? On your recall. specifically, and they remove its yep. true damage to instead make it per I percentage hack max health of physical <laughs> damage now. Okay, got it, got it. All right, cool. Know everything I need to know, and that ultimate still the same. Yep. <laughs> It's cool. still an execute, but full tank Rek'Sai doesn't use it exactly as well as Assassin Rek'Sai has in the past. She really uses it as like a, I'm going to oh get on top God. of your ADC and they're not going to be, be having very much fun. Kind of like. Many ADC dread the Assassin Rek'Sai. As we have ourselves an engage here in the river already, Tech, pretty. Mix. And they get stunned up. BKP is first on the rotate, but he's got the Conqueror oh. stack for Tech. Mix. says, Dino and Chill is just going to whip the stun entirely. He's also forth the flash out of the Shady Gecko, but that's a definite miss on a first one. Where did it even go? Oh, it went in the bush. Okay. It went in the bush. Because I was like, where did the orb go? It like completely disappeared. If Phil and Chill hit that, they would have had first blood on Gecko, but. Uh, you snooze, you lose, and you need to aim better, Phil and Chill. So quite unfortunate, you missed. As Spartans were looking for a little harass on the TL. Oh, there it is. Can we get a um, a scatter of the week count? One out of two so far. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that for Doctor Phil and Chill and see if that one is just nerves or if it is a maybe a um, bit of matchup lacking expertise. As oh, Andy Chef is getting a Andy shit Chef. in here. He might chance, have this. But Nah, he doesn't. It's Rex. Like, she's gonna heal back up half her <laughs> HP. As long as you're like removing tunnels and you're getting little bits of chip damage onto the, onto the Rex eye every now and then, you're gonna be feeling fine. But with the D shield, with the second wind, and with that fury generation on the waves, it's so difficult. Like I said, to move her out of the lane. <laughs> I love how seeing Spartans harass the Zeri there, even though he can't do anything. <laughs> it's just funny seeing supports harass the ADC. As um, we are now about five minutes into the game, Cloud Drake is the first Drake to spawn once again, Britty. So it looks like a repeat. Um, hopefully we get a chem tank, because, you know, you said that was a staple here in the AEL. 
we get to see at least one throughout this series as T Lights immediately comes back to lane and gets a what, nice kill. What if the series only goes three games? If he goes three games and we don't see a single Chemtex soul, I will obviously really sadly to end the series. But you can already see here Super Chase not even having to use that teleport and nearly getting back to, I was about to say full HP, but in the meantime, Shady Echo is actually going to force a flash out of the Rexa. Out of the Rexi as. We did see Dr. Phil and Chill have a disconnect there, so maybe a bit of lag issues as we're going to step into a pause for a second here. Hopefully, it's nothing too major. Ooh. But we can just take a pause and take a look at the state of the game currently. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we have ourselves this slight pause, let's take let's just take a look from top of, of the map to the bottom. Obviously, Gecko and Andy Chef tried to continue their war crimes against Super Chase from game one not able to this time as super chase does have the flash was able to get away plus that tunnel um so but at least they now know the summoner spell has been blown on the top side of the map so expect a repeat gank at some point in the future moving on to the mid lane here um bkp currently having the push on dr phil and chill but dr phil and chill i believe should be able to clear out those minions a-okay I want to take a look at the bottom side of the map here. We see Technics clearing his Gromp. Um, and at this point right now, Galista and T-Lights are pushing in on the Braum and Jinx. However, it's a Braum and Jinx. They're probably going to push back. So I'm wondering if Technics might tell his bot lane to play a bit chicken um, and look for a potential gank onto the bot lane there. Though it is a Seraphine Zeri and uh lilia i'm not sure how much damage they'll have with quotation marks i know they have damage guys but how much damage <laughs> they'll have this early to kill a brahm jinx particularly the Brom, um yeah. because of just you know those defensive stats yeah brahm can be super super difficult to like actually deal with in the early game especially if you're doing the maxi order that i'm going to call the correct way to do it in lanes where you don't need a lot of poke you can just max your shield and just be able to tank up so many like bits of poke and resistances and just shield a lot for your team really effectively in the early game because your q it doesn't do a ton on max order if you don't need the extra damage out of it so it's oftentimes it is better to just maxi a lot of the what i'm going to call the newer brawn players don't know that i'm just not someone who plays brawn very often it was something i had to learn when i was picking it up for the first time for a little bit uh but if you're playing a little bit more defensively and if you're just trying to play safe, you put a couple points into that E, you sit back, you take the poke, you say, stand behind me, and you sit there with your shield, and you look good doing it at the very least. I'm behind, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but if they don't look for a play onto that Brahmin Jinx, they might potentially look to take the Cloud Drake here as they do have Pryo currently in lane. Um, yes, BKP is currently pushing up mid, but and Dr. Phil and Chill's health is a little bit shaky, but, you know, with regen and the Syndra being able to clear out minions pretty easily, I think they would have uh, the go-ahead to look for that first Drake here. Um, and Gecko might then just pivot to the uh, Void Grubs there. But um, at this point of the game right now, Britty, I will ask you this. Um, how do we feel about Technics and um, the Chillers so far? How do we feel about their early game? I mean, it's only five and a half minutes, <laughs> so not well, much has I happened. Mean, Maybe we'll wait till after the first Drake. They have they have decent scaling. It's not as good of a scaling as the ID Supernova side has, but it means that they're going to spike oh, just that a, little bit. He brought earlier. a dark scale too. Yeah, they have that skill, that like ability to be online just that little bit earlier. They have Goat Lister, who's going to have that two item power spike. I'm assuming he's going to go the static ship build as much as I personally dislike it. It's really good for farming and wave clearing early. Dr. Phil and Chill will hit an item and a half, two items on the Syndra, be able to start one shotting people because, you know, it's Syndra. Uh, and Technics, if he can hit a multi man sleep, it's good to win fights. It's just a matter of. Can they actually make this happen before the members of ID Supernova can get online? I was hoping that we were going to see more of that in game one, as it looks like they had a really aggressive draft that could work really well for them, but they just didn't manage to, like, link it all together. They didn't manage mm -hmm. to, like, have that secret sauce in the end <laughs> to make it all happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, for those of you wondering what happened to the pause, Dr. Phil and Chill did disconnect. 
Um, he's currently restarting his router. Uh, we don't know the ETA, but hopefully he is back soon. Brittany, I'm wondering if we should cut to a short break um, as we have been going for quite a bit here. Oh, never mind. Look at that. As, see, you <laughs> cast your curse to in reverse. We're going to hop back on to Ooh. the map as Andy Chef actually getting very low there on the top side. Forced Wait, to use his flash to get away from the Rek'Sai. Flash yeah, trade in response. We're going to have this pause here as the spectator gets back in line with the uh, three minute delay, puts everything back together. You know, Riot, small indie company. You know how it is. Okay. Uh, but it looks like Andy Chef escapes on the top side. Super Chase loses his flash up there as well, but Shady Gecko shouldn't be able to get a response kill as Spartans is going to lose a bit of his HP here on the bottom side. But again, no kills go over. It's a very bloodless game once again. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, like we said, right, both of these teams do want to scale ID Supernova more so than the Chillers, but both of them do have some good scaling in their in their drafts so just something that to be aware of as we get through this early game here and like i said yep gecko working on those void grubs and look at that technics on the dragon here as the orn horn comes through oh that's the new skin wait is that the yeah. new skin? no that's the space groove one no it's space groove conductor horn has uh, not come through just yet unfortunately yeah. though that's part of the power of Rek'Sai top right there you have your tunnel set up and it's just so difficult to engage on you even if you do get low you can just Take a couple of tunnels, walk away, and suddenly you are no longer in any danger of getting engaged on. Yeah, Rek'Sai with the tunnel, with the tunnel strat. <laughs> Such a funny, that's what I like about League, though, every now and then. Like, you see champions evolve into roles that you never would have expected or just imagined them in. Like, Rek'Sai top. Can you imagine saying that even a year ago? <laughs> oh, not a chance. Rek'Sai was in such a bad spot for so long. It feels crazy to say, like, Rek'Sai and the truly in any position. <laughs> yeah. And now at this point here, we see Spartanence and Mystic working on these plates here. And Seraph Queen here to assist her Zeri to chase them off a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, um... It's a, slow... it's, a it's a salad game. It's a salad it's game. It's a it's a slow early game. Both of these teams are scaling. They want to get to at least one item, one and a half items before they really start making heavy and aggressive trades outside of you know like tanks beating on each other in the top lane because those guys have grasp. They're always going to be trading with each other, but we're not going to be seeing too much action. It's not like we have a volley grab. Like we did in game one. Who wants to be on the map early? Wants to be making ganks happen? Is going to fall off a cliff if he doesn't. Do. <laughs> but. <laughs> It's so funny just watching them play. We're gonna we're gonna have time here to sit and talk about truly whatever we want is. Dr. Phil and Chills maybe you just done there from BKP, but you know, it's early game syndrome, it's early game victory. They're not gonna be able to find lethal this early on. Okay, since we have time to talk about whatever we want, then have you seen Dune 2? I have gotten really <laughs> good. It game was a sci-fi <laughs> genre, actually. <laughs> He didn't get those here on the top side, but, you know, Super Chase is playing Rek'Sai. He's going to be safe. He's going to just walk away from the play. Yeah, I wonder which team is on the spice right now to give them those enhanced capabilities in order to drive themselves to victory. Who is your Lisan Al Gaib? I mean, based on how you've been talking about him, I feel like it's Shady Gecko leading his team. <laughs> That's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> leading his team to victory in game one on that volley bear. I'm looking to do the same in game two here on that Sejuani. You were talking about in draft that Sejuani has a couple of good uh, passive activators for her on that E, just making sure that she has a couple of other melees, getting those passive procs down, making sure that she gets those stuns up pretty consistently, and combining that with Braum passive to get some extra stuns from Mayor as well, it's going to be a difficult time for anybody on this Ming Chiller side if they want to try and move as Spartans will get a nice bit of blocking in there to keep Mystic safe, but Seraphine has some pretty good poke in the early game. Yep, absolutely. And that poke is starting to take its toll there. Mystic, um, about one-fourth left of their HP bars. Oh. Technic finds Gecko in the jungle. Stun comes through from Shady Gecko. There's that E from Technic. He's going to smite away to red buff. He's got Blasco available, so if he wants to get away, he can. There, and finally, is popped just to make sure that he can escape the play. He knew that the rotate was there from Mystic and Spartan, so did not want to get caught unawares by... Uh, I feel like... I feel like Chillers should have tried to fight that. 
Uh, I, I know, though I didn't see exactly where the mid laners were on the map entirely, but I think that 3v3, they would have won. You saw the damage Technics was putting through. You have Seraphine and the Zeri with their ultimates. Gecko, obviously in a 1v1, cannot um, stand against Technics. So mm -hmm. I think they could have maybe try to be be a bit more aggressive there but once again i didn't see the entire map state so i don't know uh where bkp was but i would assume he had prior to rotate first so you know it is uh the better move to just retreat you didn't get the red buff so go home yeah tactics happiness might find one away it's not gonna net him like a massive game-winning advantage that's suddenly going to turn the tide and give us a full victory. But Bane Chillers, over the course of this game, like, have very slowly managed to get themselves a lead. It's less than a thousand, but gold lead is a gold lead at this point that they're happy to take as... Gold is gold. Again. Gold is gold <laughs> is gold, and gold is good. So Bane Chillers happy to be sitting with a lead in some regard as they're going to look to try and take away these next three grubs. They don't want to give over the Okay, here we go. As I think we're going to get our first fight at a neutral objective. Gekko used his smite on that uh, on the Rift Scuttler though, so I'm not 100 percent sure they actually want to try and trade for them. Although if he is standing pretty aggressively, he maybe wants to look for it. His smite is back up off of cooldown. <laughs> and they're just gonna walk away. It's no trade. Ooh. It's no kill. Hang on, wait a minute. Doctor Bill and Chill inside that chaos star was gonna be forced to flash away. A nice stun over the wall. Make sure the Shady Gecko does not get the charge it onto him and Again, no death says, hang on. T lights is gonna get gonna stunned up. There's that mighty crash from Goat List immediately exhausted. Mystic's the on core nice. flies still there though. T lights will throw it in first blood to go. Another one? Finally we have some blood. Goat List trying to get the other oh. but Spartans is Want unbreakable one. and he'll straight back one for one. Uh despite the fact that it was a one for one in the bot lane, I still like that uh Bing Chillers were finally able to fight and we're able to take it to the id supernova bot lane here they have the pope once again jinx brahm not a super strong lane in terms of the 2v2 so they knew they could take the fight to them and win and they did unfortunately goat Lista just went a bit too deep and therefore gave some gold back over to the enemy side on the other side uh dr phil and chill was able to escape from BKP here, but that Victor was putting the pause on the Syndra. Oh, so yeah. it's just something that Phil and Chill will have to be a bit mindful of as the Ornhorse coming through. The floor's gone. Nice flash from Super Chase instantly reacting to that one. Did not want to get caught by that ultimate. It's, in the meantime, on the bottom side, it's going to be the dragon started up for Bing Chillers. It is a Hextech dragon second this time around. One of those individual dragons that you are really happy to have in your pocket. Extra ability, haste, and attack speed is good for everybody in the okay. game. Shady Gecko is going to get stunned away. This dragon's getting super low. Somebody's got to spawn it down and stole it! Oh, stole Shady it. Gecko! This <laughs> is immediately going to be put to sleep as he's going to be looking to get Ooh. a crest on. It's a nice poke there from t -Light. Super Chase trying to get up on the back line with that teleport advantage. BKP BKP now the one in trouble stunned away okay. go breaks him down with a lightning oh, crash as please, mega death rocket come on he's going to have enough damage all the members are so so low missing yes. wants to find his resets he gets one another. he's getting excited can he get another he doesn't have enough oh. damage no dr phil and chill will live Saturday ship is a garbage item and i'll stand by this oh my god if mystic had he's they're still looking if Mystic had more yeah. damage on that Mega Death Rocket, I think that's a triple, maybe even a quadra right there. Um, but unfortunately not. ID Supernova able to steal the Drake, even though the Chillers were on it first, but the Chillers, maybe it was part of their plan all along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were Stack able to get- some, love Exactly, able to get some kills. Um, unfortunately, they maybe went a bit too deep don't do that at 25 minutes into the game because you might not like the results. <laughs> yeah, a little bit dangerous, but Mystic positioned very well over the course of that fight. Didn't take a ton of damage, but was able to output quite a bit. And I think, I'm gonna be real, I hate this item so much, I'm gonna keep dogging on it. If he had something other than Static Shiv, like he would have had a little bit less AD if he had Kraken Slayer, sure, but more attack speed and better procs on the pass have meant that he probably gets one, two extra kills there. Yeah. And now we see the uh, Chillers working on the Rift Herald here. Wonder where they'll use it. Most likely, probably mid. Um, but who knows? We'll see. And Goat Lista here. 
I mean, I know you're there. I know you have movement speed, but you got to be careful there, buddy. You can't just be that aggressive in front of your enemy right by their tower, you know? I mean, as long as you can dodge skill shots, I guess you could be as aggressive as you want as he was able to sidestep that zap and the winter's bite there from Braum, but... Yeah, that aggression is something that can be punished if Shady Gecko was nearby, potentially oh. in the area, as G Lance is just gonna yeah, continue to land poke here. Same now, see, is... this at this point here, uh, ID Supernova, you guys need to chill out. Y'all don't win the 2v2 um, by, on your own. You just, you, you don't. You know, you have yeah. a Braum. Jinx, yes, Jinx is a hyper carry, we know that. But Jinx and Braum are not gonna win a 2v2 into a Seraphine Zeri, and you're just gonna trade with your HP bar. So yeah. your objective at this point now is to just honestly keep farming up as much as possible. You might have to give this tower. It's getting very, very low. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's doing an admirable job of taking up some of these hits and making sure and that there the are four people down. heading to yeah. lane. He did use that glacial fissure just as a bit of disengage. We saw Shady Gecko and Technics rotating down. Dr. Kilichill is here as well. I don't think he's been spotted on Vision just yet. He's going to try and sneak into that forward brush. Doesn't look like he wants anything to do with the play this time around, though. So he's just going to use that empowered recall to get back in, back towards mid lane. And they're just going to knock down uh, that bottom lane tower for first tower one. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know what, Britty? I think. Um... Once again, the points you made earlier in the pre-show are gonna come to fruition here. We might get to see the GOAT Lista show finally take off this time around. Um, and as of right now, ID, um, I'm sorry, not ID. Being Killers are doing pretty well here. You know, they're, they're heading gold. They got their carries online a bit early, so. I like I like what I'm seeing here. Z Lily has damage, Syndra has some damage, so. Let's see if the glass cannon can hold out. Um, I think the true test of how this game progresses, especially for the chillers, will be this third Drake here. Yeah, I think this Infernal Dragon is going to be a very important objective for both these pieces fight over. You see Goat Lista close to that 2 end power spike. He nearly has that Kraken Slayer in inventory. Probably wants to farm like one more wave, try and get that item finished up. I know the completion is not that far off, from the actual components, I think it's three or four hundred gold. As Mystic is sitting on just that new quiver, he's probably a decent chunk of gold away from that completed item. And if they can get Goat Lista that completed item before they start fighting this dragon, it would be such a big spike. But I think now with 20 seconds on the respawn, it might just be too late. Yeah, definitely a bit too late as the Drake now spawning in about 15 seconds here. We see, look at the vision. I wonder, my boy PBS, can you toggle vision real quick and show us how much, oh, never mind, we have a fight. Ooh, there's that lightning crash into the mid lane. Oh, the technique is so low. low. Goat this time again, exhausted. Wait, Shady on the flank. Mystic Commander's just surviving with a sliver of HP. And Wait, Shady Gecko now him. forced to run away. He's gonna use that ult just defensively to try and escape. Loses his flash as well. And that will be the mid lane turn falling. Hang on, BKP over the wall though. He's on vision. He's gonna start to get bursted down. The Unleashed Power is gonna force the flash. Super, Mega, Death, Rocket Tech. This doesn't get caught by it. That E almost puts him perfectly in the position for it, but manages to sidestep it just barely. And again, kills not going over but the fight's one for being chillers and it shouldn't have been the dragon um both teams more particularly id supernova were very uncoordinated around this dragon objective if gecko had ulted technics there and the jinx was nearby with the mega death rocket that's the dead jungler that's the infernal rift uh infernal drake for the side of id supernova unfortunately that wasn't the case so once again being chillers with the poke able to poke out um supernova squad here and able to get themselves this third drake so i like what i'm seeing them they're also using that rift hero there on the mid lane turret so definitely the chillers here are here to play they they, they heard what we said in game one they went back and retuned their draft retuned not even not the draft is still kind of glass cannon but retuned how they pilot and maneuver these champions how they actually play the game so I like seeing the agency that the chillers are implementing here in game two. 
Yeah, I do think it also helps that they don't have a Baldi Bear sitting on their mid and top laner throughout the entirety of the early game, just making it unplayable for them. But in the meantime, we've got Andy Chef here potentially wait, wait. in trouble on the top side. He's got Flash. He's going to be just fine. <laughs> not, uh, I don't think they want to hurt any ultis. But, uh, not just that, Britty, but look at... We, we haven't talked about items in a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at what Victor built first. Hey, now, I hey, once again, hey. I know I said I'm a bit of a relic in terms of casting that I haven't casted or played League in a while, mm -hmm. but um, never I, I have I ever on... seen a Victor build Seraphs first. I don't hate it on Victor, like picking up a tier and then going into your first item is something that's like pretty common. Is that hate me? It's just a very it. interesting first It's item. a choice for the first item. It is a choice. It works well first item, Leandries, if you're going to be worried about your damage versus this rep side or the healing versus from Technics. Like, you have a lot of options. I'm not sure Seraphs is the one that I would pick personally, but hey, that's why <laughs> we're up here and not down there, right? No, but you know, I'm going to ask you, what would you pick? What would you build first? In this game, I would probably go Leandries. I know uh, very often there are some people also going Lich Fang first item now. That item is apparently very, very good. So mm. I've been seeing a lot of mid laners pick that item up first or second. I know Ari especially is one. I imagine Victor as already a pretty good Lich Fang user would probably also pick it up too. <laughs> yeah, Lich Fang, uh, I've heard very nasty things about that item. Nice to see that it's back into relevance <laughs> for our mages here. Um, but you know, this game has me thinking right now about the game state and where we are, right? It's only a 2k deficit for uh supernova. Ooh, Technics here. I thought he was looking for a sleep angle, but he didn't have any backup. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, at this point of the game, hold on. <laughs> Technics wants to get aggressive. He's taking another jungle camp away. This Lily has just been an absolute menace in this early and mid game, just making life difficult for Shady Gecko on the Sejuani, who I would say admirably has actually managed to keep up evenly in terms of CS, despite Technics being a you know a bit of a troublemaker in his lane, making life difficult for him. As Super Chase is going to get that demolished proc off in the top side. This game has just continued to be very slow. I think if, if I had to guess, this is probably one of our lowest kills, if not the lowest kill per minute game in the AEL. We do not have games this slow very often. I mean, this is the grand finals. This is game two. Chillers definitely want to win this one to bring the series score to one to one, one apiece, God, that, that is. is yeah, so I mean, they, they, they don't want to be in an O2 hole because that really messes with the mental, right? Then you go into game three thinking, oh my God, we have to win this, guys. So um, they, they're playing a bit more cautious, but still applying pressure where they need to. And uh, once again, looking at these items here, Zeri with the Kraken and Static now working on her third item, Jinx, with, <laughs> with the same items, actually. Oh, it looks like it will yeah. be an LDR for the Zeri coming through. I, like, I think LDR here is a little right call. You're into Braum, Sejuani, and mm -hmm. you're going to need yep. a lot of pen. Yep. It's going to delay your Navori by at least a little bit, but Navori isn't like the big damage spike item that it used to be, especially for a champion like Zeri. It's not doing the absolute most as Technics just doing a little poking here versus Shady. Maybe he wants to find more, but, you know, he's a one versus three currently. I don't think he's going to look for a big engage, but, uh, it is going to be a little bit of extra damage for the Zeri once she gets that item, but the Lord Dominix is probably just going to give her a lot more efficacy versus these frontliners if the fights are going to be as front to back as we think they are. Yes, and I need Gecko and the Braum to combo their ultimates and then Victor to then follow up and then finally the Jinx. Because at this point, um, we know we're going to get ourselves probably a full fight here at this Infernal Drake. Um, you see, well, we're, we're really balanced, huh? Yeah, yeah. We see a lot of we see a lot of tit for tat on the top side, but I want the director. Thank you, taking oh, us to the bottom. Shady Gecko is getting very low. There's that glacial person on the front line. Doctor Phil and Chill forced to flash away. Look at the Jinx though. Oh, Jinx is undisturbed. Doctor Phil and Chill. He's gonna burst down the Spartans. It's, 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 it's a huge knock up from Andy Shadows that will blow up the fight in favor of IV Supernova. Super Chase teleports in, but it's too little, too late. He'll get one as recompense, but he dies in exchange. It's a triple kill for Mystic. I de-season, baby. I told you, when you mess with the fire, you get burnt. 
Chiller what? <laughs> chiller who? Chiller when? Chiller chiller where? Chiller why? Not today. Yeah, there's a there is a reason that Andy Chef is on one of the all pro teams. This man has been great in terms of his top lane play, in terms of his capabilities. I was a little surprised to see him land himself on the third team. I thought for sure he would have been a shoe in for second or first, even with how good Masuf and Rutledge have looked over the course of their series. But Andy Chef has been cooking up there in the top side, and we're seeing exactly why in this game. Absolutely. I mean, like. <laughs> You know, it. there's an art to just being in the top lane for about 25 minutes into the game and not interacting with the rest yeah. of your team except <laughs> at neutral objectives. There's an art to that, okay? <laughs> yeah, you are, you are sitting in the top lane, you're training versus the Rexai who is healing over every single tick of damage you do. Like, it's gotta be so mentally frustrating to just sit there and be like, damn, I wish I could do damage to my lane opponent, but my lane opponent's playing Rexai, this sucks. I wish I could leave my lane. Your... <laughs> but Rexai's gonna take my tower if I do. But you teleport into your first team fight, hit a three-man knockup, follow up with Call to Forge God, and suddenly the fight's just over and you're like, damn, I'm a god, actually. I'm just the best top laner in the league. Exactly. And the biggest, um, the biggest mistake of that team fight for the terms of the chillers, they left the Jinx completely undisturbed. Um, they they couldn't get to her though. Like oh, yeah. that three man knockup that Andy Chef got was was disgusting. The Seraphine ultimate didn't really connect like it should have, uh, which is quite unfortunate because if it did, that perhaps may have turned the tides a little bit, but that's that's just the way the cookie crumbled right so now they find themselves actually in an even gold state in terms of you know gold across the teams but there's that secret um stat and secret gold that you never think about and those are the orn items yeah, Shady Kekko's gonna look for some damage here on the Super Chase up on the top side. I think Super Chase, though, is in fact playing Tank Rek'Sai, so we'll just tunnel away from that play and not feel under too much threat here currently. We do have the bot laner rotating up, though. This might be a little bit over-aggressive from Super Chase. He's got, got, a, couple tanks. Of, he's oh got a couple God. of tunnels set up, so if he can get away, but no, the CC is just too powerful. Nah, nah. Super Chase over Wait, Space okay. as well. Um, they'll donate a fifth kill over to Mystic. In the meantime, though, through the mid lane, Goat List, Technics, and T-Light are just oh, gonna you this tower. Sleep on the BKP. How much do they have? The for that snare skill was big, but it's not big enough. Goat list up shreds through that health bar. Oh, if only uh, the chillers had. Wait, are they just using their health? Oh, the teleport, nice. Okay, they good, because I was like, they, they want to trade this, because they know they lost the Baron, so they need to trade something back. I really like this play here from the Bing Chillers, but will it oh, cost God. them? Oh, God, Andy Chef finds Gold List up. Doesn't manage to find the knob. Oh, Gecko from behind. Like, shot him down. Shady Gecko with the flank is going to force out Technics and Dr. Villain Chill. Oh, Powered ultimate from Sinza. Doesn't do enough damage. Stand behind Braum, indeed. Mystic is just a little too tanky on the Jay. Oh, the Super Mega Death Rider downtown finds Technics as well. It's just that a fast might... in favor of Ivy Supernova. They're going to be pushing into Baron Power, uh, not into Baron Mains, but into Super Minions in the mid lane. So I don't know if they'll be able to find the end, but that's Yeah, no, that. yeah, yeah. I thought if there if there were some minions more close by, I was like, could, could they end here? But there's not a minion in sight. So, yeah. Um, but really, really, I, I love what ID Supernova did, you know? They recognize, okay, we're gonna lose our inhibitor, but we're gonna make them pay for it. And the flank from Gecko, and hope that thought, you are very, very deep, my friend. But he's he very, does have support, tank. he does have support, yeah. He's got a team behind him, he's got a bear him yeah. up. He's feeling fine to just walk forward aggressively as far as he's just gonna tank this turret in the face of Super Chase and say, hey, Mystic, there you go, free gold for you. And speaking of free gold, you were talking about it earlier, the Orn item upgrades, that first one yep. came through already, the edge of finality for Mystic. It turns out Jinx with three items and with an Orn upgrade and Infinity Edge does a lot of damage. Who would have thought, truly? yeah absolutely and the obviously well oh so you meant the first item besides the item orin gives to himself besides so, orin's yeah, own yeah, item yeah yeah, yeah yeah correct correct so next he should be upgrading the victor here if he doesn't he's trolling he's not um, 17 he actually has all the upgrades fully online now uh he's it's just a matter of who he wants to give it to next i think he's wait he gave it to the support 
Yeah, wait. he has two more upgrades. It doesn't matter. He yeah. just needs to wait for BKP to stand close to him so he can upgrade his Rabidons. It's fine. Why hasn't he upgraded the Rabidons first? Uh, you know what? That's a great question. I'm not sure Andy Chef knows where BKP is currently. As, <laughs> I'm not sure BKP knows where Andy Chef is as he's going to go through a like, top side wave. As, oh as my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he just said, oh. Oh, the shielding, the healing tea lights managing to keep his jungler alive, but uh, yeah, that's a four item jinx. I've heard those are pretty good in League of Legends, actually. As hey, remember, Brady, this, this is the part we were scared of, right? D didn't we yeah. say if the game gets past this point, um, good luck? To Bing Chillers? Yeah, because Bing Chillers, they had their they had their power point. They were hitting like their two item power spikes. They were getting really, really strong on their carries, but now it's Mystic's turn to be strong. As Super Chase is gonna get engaged on here on the bottom side, call the Forge God. Maybe looking for an engage. The stuns are coming through. There's that Encore. Nice catch oh, did nothing. from Spartans. Not gonna allow him to go through anybody else. In the meantime, on the backside, Dr. Uh, DKP forced Jeez. to flash away, but it does not matter. Mystic is getting excited. It's a double it's kill Jover. for Jinx. It's Jover. And like you say, I think it might just be a little Jover. Nine and one for Mystic. 13 out of 14 KP. He's feeling pretty good on this hyper carry. I need to think of more sun puns and more more flame puns. <laughs> Chat, help me out. Help me think of more fire puns. We need some ID. Uh, we need other ID memes because I'm not gonna say it's ID season. Like I'm not gonna bite that. But uh, Andy, you can't you can't upgrade in front of in front of Doctor Billy. He's just gonna cancel you. <laughs> Hang on, wait. No, he's got it. And, and funk. Hey, there we go. Rapid on upgraded. The Death Crown finally available. I don't think Shady Gecko actually has an item that's currently upgradable, so I think Andy Chef is gonna be waiting a little bit before he can manage to get that one done as a nice two-man stun from Dr. Bill and Shell. Maybe this is the engagement we're looking for. Here, though. It's getting very, very low. Swarms, of course, to use that glacial fissure defensively. It's a great bit of heal, though. All wow. the members of Ivy Supernova survive. Great job healing from Gecko and Spartans. Uh, yo, I I'm loving I'm loving how ID is playing this game. It, it, this is great. You know, I overheard in the Bing Chillers locker room after game one, he got me. <laughs> Feel of the Bing Chillers. Dunk, dunk on him, you know? That that freaking BKP. He boomed me. Phil added, he's so good. Repeating four times. Phil then he's said so he good. wanted to add BKP to his list of players that scrims with this summer. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it turns out uh, Ivy Supernova are pretty good at League of Legends. And I, I just want to point out again that in the regular season, they did have a very difficult group. They had Dog, Iota, and Elysium Super Hot in their uh, in their group. So obviously going two and two is not like the worst thing is, hang on, double TP is coming through, BKP teleporting in to all the members of Big Chillers, but they can't punish him. The Seraphine Encore is nice, but it's not gonna be nice enough. Spartans will find his second kill of the game as Dr. Bill Chill trying to get a little bit of poke down, but now without the engage tool of Seraphine, can they manage to find a fight? Can they defend their base as I mean, it's looking more and more difficult as the gold league just spirals further and further ahead for Ivy Supernova? Oops, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> Bing Chillers on their death throws here, trying to mount a stalwart defense, but it's just—it's very hard to cut through an Orn, a Brom, and a Sejuani. Yeah. And then you have. Okay, Lily oh, with the five flash sleep. Flash sleep. They, need, they need this. Miss Sixty's untouched in the back line, so we're going to start charging moment. up. Zeri no, it's not enough. Happen, but it's a double kill it's already for Miss Sixty. Lights has to respawn. They are still looking to play through this Zeri. Galista still full HP, still trying to kite. They only kill the down onto him. It's just a matter of <laughs> centimeters, but they can't get on top of the Jinx. Oh my God! For one death, call on the Forge God to seal the deal. The charge does not come through in time. Galista. It's shut down for Mystic Goes Legendary. And game two is gonna go to IDS as they're gonna look to take the series in a clean sweep and send us to game three. Flay is crying right now because he's thinking that he actually has to eat Shady Gecko after this. <laughs> you know, he's crying in a restaurant with his wife the other day and when he was had a bad coughing fit for like 30 seconds, when he was finally done, his wife asked him like, yo, are you okay? He replied, bling chillers. She nodded her head. She knew he choked on air.
Yeah, uh, it's not. It's obviously not over yet. We do still have at the minimum one more game to play. But ID Supernova are looking untouchable in this series. They're playing out of their minds. Andy Chef up there in the top side, deathless on the Orn, having shockingly enough the second most damage in the game, which you know feels a little ridiculous given that there was a Zeri and a Syndra and a Lilia. But you know, Orn's a pretty good champion in League of Legends. Who would have thought? That is disgusting. That 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 shouldn't be. That shouldn't happen, but it did. Um. So for you know what, let me be a bit serious though and stop the memes right for a bit. I do like how Big Chillers played the early game. Unfortunately, it just got away from them once again. I for game three, you're gonna you have to copy your opponents. I think you need to, or you play and die by your own style. But I think they need. I my thing they should look for a standard draft. Goat yeah, Lista obviously can do the work. You just need to give him more support. I feel like everybody on being chillers, it's solo queue. It's a solo queue draft. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, a, it's a solo queue draft. It is. Like that's not to be offensive, but it, it is. Like literally the Lilia can play for herself, Syndra. And kind of play for herself, Zeri, Seraphine, and then Rek'Sai. Like, there's no ultimate cohesion in their draft. Like, you saw the ID Supernova draft. They had three people that get in your face. Victor and Jinx clean up the rest. Yeah, it was maybe a bit of a draft gap, maybe just a bit of a gameplay gap as ID Supernova got to their late game spikes. They got powerful in their late game carries. They were able to play out the game essentially the way that they really wanted to from minute one mm -hmm. and like you said the big chillers they played good in the early game they had some early leads that they capitalized on they were able to play aggressively they were looking for picks but they just couldn't be aggressive enough they weren't able to pounce hard enough they weren't able to capitalize hard enough and punish hard enough to the, shut down the members of id supernova the biggest thing i would change out of this draft is the syndra because you have Lilia, Zeri, Seraphine, Rek'Sai. Those are four mobile champions. And then Syndra is kind of, guys, wait, wait for me. Wait, wait for me. <laughs> like, I would have changed that for a more mobile champion. Maybe a LeBlanc. Um, just something that has a bit more mobility. That, because then you can all flow like water, you know, be a more cohesive unit if you're going to do that type of draft. But um, with that being said, Brady, I think we're going to cut to a short break as we prepare for game three. Will the Bing Chillers be able to bounce back or does Supernova give them their last shine? We'll find out in a bit here. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everybody. We're here for what could potentially be our final match of the AEL winter season. We've got Bing Chiller's Emerald on the blue side and ID Supernova on the red. And as per usual, we're hopping straight into draft. How are Bing Chillers going to be able to snap back, send us to game four, or is ID Supernova just going to slam the series away and take home their chip? So Bing Chillers once again chills blue side. The bands are Zach and Kaisa. And I'm liking I, I really like IDs. Um I like how they think. They they like, okay, you want blue side? No jinx. They're taking jinx off the board. Nico, once again, still keeping their well, this should be a jinx off the board. They're using that time to talk mm -hmm. about their next stuff, but like I was just in case they decided to trick us. Um so yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like what their bands are. I feel like ID have a very so far from what we've seen id supernova have a very clear draft identity they know what everyone knows what their role is yeah they have a very cohesive draft strategy coming into all of these games but being chillers once again don't want to let them get their hands on the kaisa and the volley there i mean after shady gecko's performance in game one i wouldn't want to let him have it either i'm not too shocked with that ban away id supernova once again if, you, gonna if i see a b1 back. brand is over <laughs> I could be the first pick brand for Bing Chillers. They do are on the blue side again if they want to reflect that game one draft. They are looking at the Rex side once again for Super Why? Chase, though, so they're going to lock that one away instead. Why? What I did it do? The healing on it was really nice, and it was very difficult to move out of lane. It was just a matter of they weren't able to, <laughs> so... you know, it's difficult for ID Supernova to move the Rex side out of lane and get her, like, moving anywhere aside from like the one time they dove everybody top and killed her but like big chillers need to also find a way to get her out of the lane you don't want her just sitting up there doing nothing okay fair enough but now look id supernova clap back with the orn and seraphine i already like where this draft is going we've seen being chillers hovering that brahm that is i think brahm into seraphine isn't a bad pick however we saw what happened when it was paired up with that ADC once again. So this is, I feel like this is a trap right now. <laughs> because- if they just grab like Braum's area here, I wouldn't hate it. I think they just need something to pair with this Braum. I like the Braum versus Seraphine and Orn. You're able to block out the ultimates, whichever one comes out to engage first, you can block away. It's a nice 
soft counter to both of these champions. It's just going to be a matter of what do they pair it with in the lane phase. Exactly. And then you have to be mindful once again. Same thing. Now that you paired it with the Braum, you are basically saying, okay, we are playing to scale and to get Goat List to much gold and as much um as many items as quickly as possible um so we're not looking to fight too much in the bot lane except with the help of our jungler and we have the okay. twitch locked in okay that twitch actually yeah twitch did get through this time around um so we'll see how it goes let's the pilots the rat but i wonder what id supernova will pair it up with here or sorry pair up the seraphine with here um, if they'll look to pick their AD carry as well. It could always be a Seraphine mid lane or a Seraphine bottom lane carry if they really want yeah. to be, but it seems like they are opting for it as the supportive pick currently as Ezreal is the hover, sitting on that zero. It's going to hmm. be the way. Seraphine Ezreal is a really good poke lane. I mm -hmm. worry about how much damage they're going to be able to take versus Braum and uh, Twitch. No, they'll be I fine. The, <laughs> the aggression in the early game could be very, very dangerous, but... It's Seraphine and Ezreal, they're so safe in the early game, it's so difficult to like push them away. Mm hmm I think that we find even like past 10, 15 minutes. I mean it's it's kind of as the second round of bands are coming, it's kind of the same thing to me. You know, the Seraphine Zeri from game two, it's just Seraphine Ezreal, which is a lot of poke. Um though the all in from the Bing Chiller side will be a bit <laughs> a bit sneakier because you know twitch with the invisibility <laughs> if he's able to f get behind um the seraphine more than the, you're gonna have to be a bit more creative trying to kill the ezreal because of that arcane shift but the seraphine mm -hmm. could be a, an easier target to feed off of um just due to that immobility as these second rounds of bands are coming in Syndra taking off the board mundo as well um and we're waiting for id supernova for their last ban here it will be the aurelian soul so no scaling mid laners at least for dr phil and chill here and obviously they definitely don't want to give bkp the syndra once again so um i'm curious to see how being chillers are going to pick their last two picks here i'm so far i like their draft identity a bit you know, they, you got two tanks, you have an AD carry, okay? You got people that can peel for the Twitch or at least cause some type of distraction. Um, so those last two picks are going to be very critical. Um, especially, in my opinion, I think the jungle pick more than the mid lane pick will be the one that makes or breaks the Bing Chillers draft here. Yeah, Rexite could always slip into the jungle where we're kind of expecting it to be in the hands of Super Chase on that top side. I'm surprised to see Bing Chillers going so aggressively into the mid lane pool. I feel like we've seen so many bans thrown at BKP over the course of this series, but it feels like it hasn't affected his ability to play his champions well, his ability to pilot oh. his comfort picks. And I I mean, like, there's so there's a certain amount to be said for, like, oh, he was really good on Cinder in game one. We can't let him have that. And Oriana pairs really well with Warren and Seraphine. We can't let them have that. But, like, you're, you only get those two bands in the second phase, and if you're using them to just pinch down the pool of a guy who has what is essentially a Ooh. champion ocean, it's a, it's a bit <sighs> dangerous as Ink Chiller is something that was getting away from them in the second draft. It's going to be available in the third. The Ari for Dr. Phil and Chiller. I like that. Cover pick for him. Mm -hmm. Again, more disruption, more distraction in the, uh, in the fights just to allow Twitch to open up and spray and pray a little bit more. Talia's a great pick here. Counter to Jarvan wise just through the rocks. You can stop Orn from ulting. Uh, Talia jungle, right? It's, yeah. yeah, Talia jungle, Talia jungle. Like top and Ari mid. Yeah. It, there are no way to be Talia top. <laughs> it's just funny. I haven't seen Talia <laughs> jungle surprised. for such a for such a while that I was I forgot. I'm like, is that still a thing? Did they nerf that or anything? You know? But um yeah. good to know. But J4, ah man. 3-0. I'm calling the it 3-0 call, right now. The I'm call calling from it 3-0. The desk here for protection. 3-0 already. My prediction was wrong. I'm calling 3-0. <laughs> I think you are the one who actually said that it was going to be... Uh, I said 3-1 because I'm like, it's amateur. Right, yeah. you, they're yeah. always, you know, they're always going to play one game like um, other species. <laughs> <laughs> a bit mean but you know what it's not entirely unfounded people are prone to making mistakes there will be times where people have you know 
thrown things out of their way and made sure that, like, you know, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to win games. But one thing that you can do to make your solo queue games easier to wait, win wait. is our final sponsor of tonight and our final mm -hmm. sponsor of the AEL Winter Split. It's Pro Comps, a game changer app for the League of Legends community. It's not just like other tools. It's your personal draft coach, perfect for both teams and solo players. In fact, you can even pair it with any other app you use. Pro Comps stands out with features like custom champion pools, personalized tier lists, and live draft advice. You can think of it like having a virtual coach and a strategy toolkit all wrapped up in it to one. They offer real-time champ and ban recommendations, and they already have over 200,000 downloads and thousands of daily users just like you. ProComps is user-friendly and is totally free, so it's a no-brainer to at least give it a go. You can download ProComps now and you'll experience a whole new level of drafting power in your league games. You can go to ProComps.gg, download it from Overwolf, or you can click on the panel located below our stream. Nice plug there, Brady. Very well done. <laughs> well done. Because I am a I remember, remember, at segueing my advertisements. No, you're good. I'm about to uh, sound like a boomer here, but back in my caster days, when I used to plug the sponsor, it wasn't as smooth as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but any. <laughs> As we but, wait for the client draft to finish, um, we're going to take a short break here to save our sanity and yours. We're going to take a break while we hop into game three. We'll see if Ivy Supernova can finish out this series three to take home their chip, or if the Bing Chiller Emerald can strike back and start their reverse sweep. Don't go anywhere. We'll be Rio. Right Rio. <laughs> The shapes I used to take I don't like a strong man But it's easier to push away Cause it could all end here With a straight daylight caught in our eyes And my shadow was stretching out Through all the things I left behind
We are back here for game three of ID Supernova versus Bing Chiller's Emerald. And it has been a Supernova series so far. They're looking to shut this one out 3-0 and take home their chip in decisive fashion. But we'll see if Bing Chillers have what it takes to swing back and start pushing themselves for that reverse sweep. Yeah, it is now do or die here for the bing chillers oh, next oh, oh and no. it's not a GG. good start exhaust burn flash is traded but shady gecko with the pm <laughs> takes first blood um uh, sybil you might need to do a mental check on your team <laughs> but yeah that is not a great start here for the side of being chillers, like who got the kill? Oh, okay. So J4 got the kill, so it's not yeah. too bad. Seraphine got the assist, so she gets a little bit of gold as well. So it's not on the carries. Um, but at the same time, still, you blew your flash. Honestly, I might you might see Gecko and BKP uh look to harass Technics now in his side of the jungle. Yeah, they since he's down a summoner spell. Flash, so then they, Flash is Talia is a very, very viable gank target. So if they can figure out how exactly the Talia is going to be pathing, and some nice cues land from Mystic there in the bottom side, then there's a definite potential for some early pressure. As though this is going to trade pretty heavily with Mystics, press the attacks traded with each other. I do want to point out, uh, we didn't get the chance to talk about it as the first blood went over so quickly, but uh, Mystic has opted for the teleport on this Ezreal. So we're looking for fairly passive poke heavy laning phase they're not going to be looking for any like hyper aggressive yep. all ins versus this wrong twitch yeah and we also didn't talk about it as well um but the karma pick as well right it is a karma mid um there was the very very hold oh, that uh, thought uh, here oh yeah, no wait I what think, i think dr phil must have disconnected again he I... has to have disconnected yeah. Wait. Hang wow, on. that Wait. is sportsmanship. You know what? That's I think Dr. I think Dr. Vilja was entirely just like <laughs> mental boomed out of it, disconnected. I'm not 100 no, no, percent sure wish, but like I have the, the all chat open. I have the all chat open. I think he disconnected. Yeah. The respect there for Shady Gecko not taking that kill. Top tier, top tier sportsmanship, like you said. Absolute props. Yeah, yeah, that's that's mad respect though. <laughs> I, I'll speak for them, but I don't know about me. I might have taken that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> it's the finals. It's, it's, I might have taken that shit. It's literal do or die for both of these teams as Mystic is gonna get engaged on, on the bottom side. Exhaust comes down. They don't have that extra combat summoner. Mystic flashes forward just to perish. Two T lights. Spartans is gonna flash away, but he's already slowed up. Go with Mystic getting a little bit of minion block, though. It might be with Mickey up too, but Gecko's here to try and save his support. Gonna look wow. for a bit of extra damage. He's gonna tank up that Bronk you as well. No damage coming through from Spartans. It's a nice Shady, save for Gecko. Shady Gecko is really getting yeeted, bro. I can't believe Ooh, this. I never on. thought the day would come. Tactics is rotating, but so is BKP. The punish comes through. BKP will find their first in Tactics, sitting on the ground again. Yeah. So, um, what started off as a great thing for the side of Bing Chillers here. Bing Chillers give it and Bing Chillers take it away. <laughs> um, and Technics is now 0 and 2 on this. Talia does have the gold advantage at least, or not gold advantage, creep score advantage on Gecko. But in terms of actual gold, if you look at the numbers, he does not there. He's about 400 yeah. gold behind his counterpoint here. So don't let those numbers lie to so, you. So about a first blood behind him, yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Shep might actually be in trouble here on the top side. There's a pretty meaty wave here that Super Chase is taking up. If I'm Technics, I'm taking this kill. Up. There's that flash. Super Chase doing a decent job. But again, this mini wave is so big. They're going to take a lot of damage trying to deal with this horn. As Andy Shep doesn't have anywhere in particular to go, but I think he's just going to in protest lock it down. He might have an opportunity to teleport out. Use the He's just gonna try and execute instead. He's stalling as much time as possible to stay away. He actually wow. gets it. What a king! Andy Chef at the top side, getting that execute down. Uh, they just can't get a. They can't. They can't. W give them something, please. <laughs> it's not <laughs> fair. They tried so hard on that gank. They deserve the kill. They deserve the gold. Okay. Well. As uh, some scholars from my time have once said, uh, get good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, back on a back on a more serious note, though, I, before the fighting started, I meant I wanted to comment on the karma once again. I'm gonna try. So it's ca comment karma. Um, so I was gonna say, do we think it's uh more of a supportive karma or a it's almost take for karma? Sure. But it's probably damage. It's gonna be it's gonna be damage at least first item for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if BKB offs for something like a staff with flowing water second, unless Spartan's already is going to, but it's Malignant's first item for Karma almost always. I think Horizon Focus is a great second item on her, or Leandries if you're dealing with tanks, but mm -hmm. as Super Chase is gonna be the only like big, big tank on their team, I wouldn't be too shocked if it was just like Shadow Flame or Death Cap or you know that Horizon Focus I mentioned earlier. You can build pretty much full damage on this Karma as absolutely she really is the only like true source of magic damage on her team. Spartans is gonna be there doing some, but if the Seraphine is building as supportive as I think she is, which she should, she should be. <laughs> you do have a Karma on your team. You've got an AP carry already locked away. You've got an Ezreal, a Karma, and a Jargon to support. BKP should just be allowed to build as many damage items as he wants. Absolutely. As we see the chillers, they're working on that Mountain Drake, but Gecko and the rest of the Supernova squad have themselves a little of a pincer angle mystics we'll have to ooh, why am i yeah he, play he back sorry he just <laughs> away and it's just I defaulted gonna be back into my old role <laughs> it's just gonna be a ty for a leash and shady gecko's just gonna swipe that one away and i like to look there from tactics you have to try and make these plays happen you have to look for it but the priority in the bottom lane just wasn't fully there you didn't have the rotate in mid lane dr village hill was already recalled and it was just a stronger rotate from ID Supernova, and they're just gonna take the dragon. Yep, and that's a mountain dragon on the Orn. So our next Drake will be an ocean. Ooh, you, you. Okay, so early one of these games I, has to be a catch. You already knew where I was going. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> Surely one of them has to be, right? Like, we've been seeing them all season. I've complained about them so much. It, it will be the one time that I'm like, hey, can we please get a soul for Chemtech? It's going to be the one game where we don't oh, get one. Dr. Phil and Chill missing the charm. Yeah, charm misses in the mid lane. DKB is going to get a healthy train. And that's really the karma mid train pattern. You lock them down with W, you hit them with a Mantra Q, you grab a couple of autos, and it's just so much health lost to the train. It's so disgusting. Oh, flash in. Shady Gecko gets that down onto Goat Lista, and with no flash still on the Twitch, it's just a perfectly timed punish. They lock down the Twitch, and it's another kill over to Shady Gecko. Really nice play there from Shady Gecko and the rest of the Supernova squad, locking down Goat Lista there, getting the Twitch behind. No one likes a behind ADC, but there are some certain champions where it feels even worse when that champion is behind. Twitch is definitely one of them, because you just feel just so out of place when you're behind luckily it's only actually no yeah, oh, that so here on the top side looking for a punish on the andy chef he's taking a couple of tower shots still getting very very low but they will manage to find the kill in the okay pkp tower dr phil and chill with that spirit rush looking to finish off that last bit of damage no charges left still looking to just keep those the... spells up trying to get that last oh. bit of damage but he just can't find it the shields and sustain from karma just that little bit too much Quite unfortunate there that Phil and Chill is not able to secure the kill there onto BKP. But I do want to commend the Chillers there for getting uh, a gank completed on the top side, taking down Andy Chef, putting that Orn in an O2 hole. So they are still fighting back despite the deficit they 
have put themselves in in the early game but i did want to comment on the cs difference the gold difference in the bot lane 58 to 82 cs actual gold is about 800 difference for mystic so um gold listed here is very behind very much at a deficit here so we need to try and see the chillers there get their support and infusion of gold somewhere or um perhaps put these other carries such as bkp behind and get this ari ahead a bit earlier so she could roam as well this uh, has that spray and frame. They're gonna look for some aggression onto the bottom lane. Spark okay, is the and... target. Is gonna get stunned up on top of that glacial fissure. Nice flash away from the flip back. Oh, it's a nice no. three man pull onto that lawn court. But it's a great cleanse from Goat List to keep himself safe. Mystic now trying to trade back. Dr. Bill Shield doesn't have that spirit rush, so can't look for a dive. Nice to disengage from the members of IG Supernova. Staying safe on the bottom side. Yeah, nice gank attempt from the chillers here. Unfortunately, they weren't able to complete it, weren't able to get the kill. They almost, in fact, lost their own lives there, getting that close to the tower, the Encore, drawing them in, but they were able to get out, um, quite luckily, as Gecko has now taken, I believe he's going to get all the Void Grubs unopposed, as the charm does can... Why am I play by playing? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I, look, look, I, I understand. I'm, I'm subcolored so in, and as a play by play, it's so hard to get off that like instinct of like you see a play happening, you want to immediately jump on it. I get you. <laughs> and that was the first charm we saw. Phil and chill hit. <laughs> Spartans, maybe looking for some aggression here on the bottom side. T Lights has the wall, so he's gonna keep Goblista safe at the very least. But some nice damage from the Ezreal. He doesn't have uh, the Arcane Barrage available, so they will just be safety recalling for the bottom line here. Yeah, so Technics now looking for a gank here onto BKP, but they did not know Gekko. that Gecko was here as well. Nice flick back. Technics looking for some damage. The Mancer Q from BKP Wait. does its work, and Shady Gecko will say thanks for the free gold. Now 3 0 on the Jarvan. Wait, Gecko has uh, the Sundered Sky as his first item here. Oh, yeah. So we expect to definitely see some. <laughs> damage from this Jarvan here. That was a lot more than I was expecting. That was hilarious though. As now the Ocean Drake is spawning, Technics now in a three death hole here. Um, so is gonna look for something on the bot lane. And pray, but that's not his jungler behind him. He's gotta be a little bit more oh, no. careful. Has to flash away from the flag and drag. T-Lex now maybe the one in trouble. But Mystic, Arcane shifts and flashes forward to shut down the rat in the bottom lane. <sighs> Teleport okay. coming out. Teleport. <laughs> Wrong Dr. Phil and Chill. They're gonna look for a punisher. Dr. Phil and Chill waiting to find that charm. It's an arcing shift over the wall from Mystic, though. He's gonna sacrifice Spartans to the members of Bane Chillers and say, hey, you can't have me, but take my support. He's free. Okay, good. That's what I wanna see. I need to see more proactiveness from the Chillers. I need to see you fight. Just keep fighting. Just keep fighting because if you give up, if you mental boom at this point, then that's pretty much the game so keep looking for picks keep looking for plays like that claw your way back one at a time one kill at a time charm connects here charm bkp that and karma damage low. yeah the karma damage is good but the art damage is not bad it's something you have to respect that spirit rush on very very short cooldown not up just yet will finally come up but just after the play is over if that ultimate was just that little bit closer to fruition that's probably a dead bkp at the very least yeah BKP there. This man is still in the lane. He's, he's hanging out. He's got no fear. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I mean, he knows where his jungler is nearby, but at the same time, wow. Um, Ari's ultimate is up, and did, she does have the mana. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's that ulti, and the mana team is not finished off Dr. Phil and Chill this time around. The passive healing coming through, and Dr. Phil and Chill will find his first Aww, stone. Aw, they're fist bumping. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, absolutely. I'm glad Dr. Phil and Chill punished BKP here. There for his hubris, one of the seven deadly sins of a League of Legends player. Uh, you know, <laughs> greed, arrogance, apathy. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> some arrogance there and greed. And he was punished rightly so for that.
So. Snake is gonna get exhausted. It's a nice encore on the two. Immediately cleansed from Goat Lissa. He's looking for some punish, but how do you deal damage versus this okay. shielding Sarah yeah. Fiend? Goat Lissa now exhausted. Helix actually very, very oh, no. well. The one in trouble here. But Tech oh, oh, from yes. behind with the wall is gonna pick up Mystic Spartans. Should be the next to go down. It's a nice oh, side step from T Lights. It's two quick kills over to the Talia. Technix giveth and Technix taketh away, but this time he gives himself the kills to put himself at a positive KDA ratio. I would have preferred to him to give at least one over to the rat, but we'll, we'll be okay with that for right now as Gecko is now working on the Rift Hero here. So once again, like I said, Bing Chillers, they just got to keep fighting, keep looking for picks, keep um making plays and that's what they're going to do. So I do appreciate that fact that they found that um found those two kills on the bot side of the map here but once again i would have preferred to see at least one maybe even both go over to goat lista because um he is going to still be a very important member um, for a punish onto the rec side yeah. here i don't know if this is exactly punishable but they've got spartans and bkp up here i don't think you can exactly dive the full tank rec side but you know i appreciate the effort someone's making something happen top lane yeah, for sure, as Andy Chef will be A-OK -okay on the attempts of his life. You know? Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, I just realized, uh, Britty, it is not a Chemtech soul. No, it's not. We didn't get to see a single one. <laughs> well, hang on. It's you not lied. It's you not lied. A, it's Hextech. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, not a single one. But we do still have potentially two more games to play after this if Bing Chillers can shake up a little bit and start to come through. It's it's not look I will say it's not looking great for them. The early game has been once again domination from the members of ID Supernova. They know how to play their game and they're playing it well as Andy Chef is actually looking for the 1v2 under his own tower. The Void Rush though should just execute him under his own tower. Now they're looking for an engage on the bottom side. Shady Gecko may be caught out. Goat Lista has that spray, spray, but he just doesn't have the damage yet. Mystic's over the wall. The Encore's gonna land on to Dr. Phil Chill. They can't find that knock up off the flag and drag. They do find the Oak some more. Spartans, but they just don't have enough damage. Um, so yeah, I, you had said that. I forgot the point you said, but I was trying to refute it. But no, Bing Chillers are definitely. Um, they're not out of it for sure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they are in a hole. But they're not they're not completely sunk am, just yet. I am of the opinion that the game is not over until it's over. And again, while IDS are looking really good, they're playing this game out to their strategy. They have kills onto their Jarvan. They're playing through Shady Gecko, who's been having an incredible performance Absolutely. in this series. Mystic is ahead in the bottom side. BKP is trading well in the mid lane. And he's playing one top lane. He sure is playing hey, one. He's doing have... he's doing his job too. <laughs> He's making not, sure that top side of the much, map doesn't... I don't have much more to say about this performance, but he's exactly. sure he's, he's making sure more. top side of the map doesn't affect anywhere else on the map here, as we are getting ready for our Hextech oh, drink. Oh, double flick from Tech. Oh, no. the noggin from Super Chase. Yikes. This might be the fight that they found. BKP already caught away. Tech is going to force that splash away I from Spartans over the just wall. Just give this here, right? Locked up from Andy Shad Misty now trying to trade with Goat Lista. Has that extra level in that arcane shift, so he will be able to stay safe and far away. Just give this. Yeah, yeah, that's been Chillers taking a pick, taking a fight when they're gonna take the Drake. Yeah, BKP di died, and that's literally your only AP source of damage. A great source of AP poke, as we know the Seraphine doesn't poke that much. But I like how IDS have decided to pivot to try and take this second. Uh, what? Void Rush onto the back line. Spartans has the shields, though, so he's not going to take too much damage. Super Chase just trying to get in and get aggressive. Andy Chef will find the knockout onto one. Doesn't get it onto Dr. Villager, but Super Chase getting very, very low. Glacial Fissure is going to keep the fight separated for a little bit. The Technics out of the target has to flash away from the members. On court oh, five, three. 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 Spartan sets his team up, and they knock him down. Technics is now on the bottom side of your map as well. Andy Chef will fall to the tower. Gold Listen will find one. The exhaust just come through a little bit too late. So Bing Chillers will swing back with one. But I need Supernova, take a talent, take a fight, look at it, continue to take the game. Wow, what a fight here in the mid lane. Shady Gecko, I don't know if that was intentional. I'm pretty sure it was an accident. I don't think he meant to miss the tier two turret, but he did. And that caused him to get to the fight a bit later than he wanted to. Um, but luckily for ID Supernova, they were still able to take out Dr. Phil and Chill and get the tower. 
Um, also, it looked like Andy Chef was autoing some minions, which is why he died to the tower, or he clicked on his shop on accident. But I noticed Orn was like stutter stepping there yeah, for there, a there second. Yeah, a little bit of green block there. It's kind of the, the downside of the six void grubs. You get a lot of extra, like, tiny things sitting around the turret, and they can definitely cause you to take a couple of extra shots than you want to. Yeah, but still, still a net positive, in my opinion, in favor of, um, ID Supernova, you know, mid lane is completely open for them now. Bot lane has only the tier two up left. Top lane still got some work to do, but they are slowly encroaching onto the Bing Chiller side of the map here. So, Bing Chillers, I need them to try and find some picks, try to take um, particularly this tier one mid lane turret out. Easier said than done, right? Because it's a Seraphine Ezreal. But, um, they need to try and get vision, particularly around these neutrals, um, where they can potentially try to maximize their pick potential and uh, make it an unfair fight for them before the neutrals pop off against ID Supernova. Because if it's a full on 5v5 at this point now, I truly think uh, ID Supernova are just going to win yeah, the 5v5. Yeah, I think the, the fights versus Orn Seraphine always get to be so, so difficult. And you have Brawl, who's good at blocking one of those two ultimates. But the issue is, one comes from one way, the other comes from the other. You can't block both at the start, so you kind of just have to pray that you can catch the Orn ulti after catching the Seraphine ult. But it's a bit outside your control. And I will say, I Supernova have done a great job of layering these ultis at a different time, so they can't get both of them blocked which has just made their team fight so, so easy. And despite the fact that Andy Chef is score, he's, you know, struggling a little bit. One in four is not the greatest score line that you could ever see. He's still effective in the team fights. He's still making things happen. He's still just a beefy frontliner for his teammates. Exactly what you want an Orn to do. Orn duty is still a relevant duty. Like, Orn <laughs> probably is one of the most <laughs> Oh, technics yeah. gets the flick away on the DK. No blood. He's no blood. trying to chase him down. <laughs> Arcane Barrage from the back. True shot Barrage. Sorry, not Arcane Barrage from Mystic. Gonna take him down there. That should just be Baron for I yeah, know over here. With no jungler for 25 seconds, Super Chase is gonna spot out the fact that they're doing Baron. They do have a little bit of vision, but I don't this know. This is the All Sing Baron? All Hunter? All Sing Baron, right? I, uh, I think this is the hunter because he doesn't have the, extra the hunter. eyes. Oh, this to ease invisible. He's hiding, waiting for that extra pink board to be taken out. Charm lands on the Spartans. Super Chase is getting in there with a the knockup. T lights with the glacial fissure. This might be the fight that they want, but Go Lista is getting engaged on Jones down, deleted. Dr. Phil and Shield goes. Go Lista is next to follow. T lights is just food. Funeral for the pyre on top. And it's ID Supernova turning the fight and taking the Baron still. Yeah, what? I mean, they had to try something though, right? Tech and here they are, DKT. still he's trying something. Flash away. He's got that Mantra W, you're not killing this Karma. Mystic will go on a killing spree. And Ivy Supernova continue to advance their lead and are gonna start marching down mid. <laughs> um, like I was saying, <laughs> Ivy Supernova, yeah, on the path to victory. Bing Chillers, they had to try something. They lost Technics earlier in that pick. Their opponent's on the Baron. If, even if you can harass them off of it without getting into a full team fight, that's still a win for them. Unfortunately, they weren't able to. The Ideas went over team. They're just so far ahead. So hard to kill them. And Bing Chillers are just finding themselves in such a difficult position to... Um even claw back into this game here like even wow. getting a single pick is hard because you know if you try and attack one member of id supernova there's somebody else around that's gonna respond so uh -huh. it's just very very difficult for the side of the chillers to find their way back into this game technics is um Technics has had some Dr. You know Phil and Chill is gonna look yeah. for an engage. They found BKP. Maybe they can finally find their flight. Super Chase very, very tanky on this front line. They found That's shutdown how you do on the Shady Gecko. They're gonna get Andy Chef as well. He's tanky, okay. but not that damn tanky. Shutdown is gonna go over to Goat Lesser Spartans now forced to flash away. Technics trying to chase him down with that Weaver's Wall Mystic though, trying to kite it out, trying to fight it out. Spartans fight the nice encore on the four, but you don't have a team to follow up this time around. Bing 
chillers are gonna look to pick up the Aegis <laughs> Mystic. You cannot teleport out in front of the red side. Void rushing. No, 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 no. I'm super chase. Finds the shutdown goal. What did I tell you about amateur players? <laughs> <laughs> now, that fight does not make this a 3-1 just yet. Or 2-1 just yet. <laughs> Sorry, not let me yet, get the score not right. Yet. Not yet. But though that is one of the steps to getting back into this game. Let's see if they can try and take this mid lane turret because they need the they desperately need the gold here. Um, All of the four gone. Nice catch from T Lights, making sure that one doesn't come through. Next teleport coming in from Dr. Phil and Chill. Oh, Lights, BKB. So, so much damage. BKP landing that launcher Q onto the Twitch. They're forced to run away now. Super Chase trying to just kite away. I think he's got a tunnel in just a second. But Shady Gecko does not want to let him get away. He's coming in with the flag and dragging the knock ups, the damage. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, oh go Lista's dead. Let's go Lista with the snipe off the True Shot Barrage. And BKP shuts down Super Chase with the Mancher Q. And what looked so good for Bing Chillers a second ago was immediately swatted away by IDS. <laughs> oh, this is very funny. I like how this, this, the last two and a half minutes have been a complete seesaw. We saw IDS. Okay, now we'll land that off. Oh, Tagmix. I, I don't even get a chance to talk. Doing his best to defend his jungler. Uh, I would say Tactix has been having a struggle boss of a series so far. For someone who's been having such a great season overall, this Jada Gecko, hang on, I'm not sure it's the engage you want, as he's gonna walk away from that. But yeah, for someone who's been playing so well in the jungle and has been having such a great season, seeing a performance like this in the finals and seeing him falter at the final step just never feels good. You have to wonder how his mental is feeling in this game three. You know, I don't I I feel like as much as Technics has had a very um topsy turvy game I think he's still doing okay in terms of being the engine for his team like someone has to be the engine right um because it's it's not going to be Dr. Phil and Chill he's just going to look for those charms so Technics has to be the one to make the plays here has to be the one to try and keep his team together to um, fight back into this game here. Yes, it's gonna be hard. Yes, you are living and dying by your jungle, but that is the role. That is how you have chosen to play around this draft. So until Goat Lista gets those three items, which still not there yet, you know, two and a half counting the shoes. So <laughs> Twitch still has a ways to go. And it's 26 minutes into the game. We know his counterpart, three and a half items, lots of lucidity boots. <laughs> yeah, plenty of cooldown reduction for the members <laughs> of ID Supernova. They want to make sure they're still they all the time. All. And I mean, with their comp, that makes entirely the most sense. You have Seraphine who wants to get those triple procs as often as possible. You have Ezreal who's whole like gameplay lives and dies by pressing q and karma is very much the same way she wants to press mansion as much as possible and now with that upgraded malignance if i'm remembering the name right the enmity of the masses oh hell it's no. just gonna be more and more damage coming through from the poke and Bing Chillers, they have what we would call, the, once again, kind of a glass cannon composition. You have a tank and a half with Super Chase and T-Lights, but mm -hmm. how far, how long can they tank in front of these Empresses? Oh Empress's my god, Technics, I think what are we doing, bro? Over positioned. Don't list it out, maybe the one in trouble. The nice interrupt from Super Chase to keep the Twitch safe and free firing. He doesn't have that spraying prey anymore. He's looking to get some damage down on the Andy Shep. Super Chase is so damn Wait, tanky on this right side. Actually does not oh, take any damage on this pit. A Shady Gecko has been waiting Go, for his engage. Watch the Twitch. Has to try and get that engage, but no, it's a nice block from T-Lex to oh, deny not the, the Encore, but Super Chase, he's tanky, but doesn't have any damage to follow up in the back line, so should just die after, you know, a certain amount of time as far as the source of Flashpoint. Mystic oh. actually getting very, very low on the backside of that fight. Dr. Phil and Chill, baby can look at him, pick up Mystic, predicts it, picks him up, and now go GG. Lista, the last to fall. It's a double kill for BKP. Respawn timers are pretty long in 28 minutes. That might just be it. Well, Brittany, you live by the rat, you die by the rat. But actually, the rat this time, I'm sorry, being Technics, not Goat Lista, <laughs> found himself out of position and if the game ends here you can definitely say that might have been one of 
the few faults that cost his team the game here as the Weavers Benchers are looking to, to make their away. last stand. Nice flick on the three, but it does not matter. T lights now the last defender. The coldness of the chiller season is but a frosty breath in the face of the supernova as IDS are your AEL champions. Wow. I, I knew I should have put three on my thing at first when QBS was asking me for some prediction. I was like, uh, I want to put three on ID because I was like, okay, I believe in the gecko and I know BKV. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, it's amateur. They're frauds. <laughs> you know, this little three one to be safe. But, you know, we got the 3 0. Congrats to ID Supernova. We didn't get the ID versus ID finals, but. We have an ID team winning a championship, at least the first that I've heard of for this org. I don't know about in other leagues, so congratulations for them. Shady Gecko back-to-back -back champions, uh, champion that is, in the Aegis League. So congrats to him, and what a game. I'm Kudos to Bing Chills for making it this far. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it just you weren't able to get it done at the end of the day. So hopefully you guys can um at least acknowledge your growth and your talent and how far you made it and try again next season if you choose to do so yeah it was a struggle of a series uh for the most part for uh big chillers to actually make it to this finals but i need supernova proving their dominance again and again and again and one final time in the finals, they're going to take home the chip. Congratulations to Iridescent Dawn Supernova. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, Britty, I think we're going to cut to a short break, right, as we prepare for our interviews with our champions. Yep. Interview with the winning team will be coming up in just a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with the team that has won the chip finally here in the AEL Winter Split. It is Ear Doesn't Dawn, Supernova. How are you guys feeling after your win tonight? Yeah, that was kind of chill. You know, kind of relaxed. Was you know, like a <laughs> it was pretty darn good, if you ask me. 
I'm not going to lie. I've been in a couple finals, a couple semis, a couple playoffs. That didn't feel like a final series. I don't know how Blaskin went to five games with these guys. <laughs> not the shade to the sister team. My goodness. But okay. Oh, my. Uh, um, how much prep did you all put into this series here? Or okay. not, not at all? I know Gecko probably was uh, drafting, had a whole draft notebook, right? I had the scouting plan, yeah. Yep. There it is. The spreadsheet. Got a whole spreadsheet. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody really looked at it until like an hour before the game, though. I, <laughs> yeah, I, you know. I, I didn't look at it. Whatever. Isn't that just like the members? <laughs> okay, so um, Brady, I'll let you start off with the first question. Actually, uh, I just want to start off with a bit of a retrospective question. Looking back at your season as a whole, you guys. How, obviously, you came home with the win. Are you happy with how you performed over the course of the season? Is there anywhere you think you like? Could have performed better. You wish you had better opponents. What were your new thoughts coming out of this season? Uh, I could take it. Um, looking back at uh, regular season, definitely dropped two big series to uh, Iota and Elysium, making this like the third seed coming into playoffs. Uh, I think we definitely could have played better throughout games and scrims. Scrims, I think we probably have lost almost every single scrim we played for the past five weeks. So that was huge. Um, playoffs though dropped one game against Elysium, so I guess that was the real finals. Um, but overall, I think everyone really turned it up. We got the Shady Gecko playoff buff, so I don't know how we lost or how Shady we can playoff. lose. Excuse me. Shady Gecko playoff buff, and you guys <laughs> showed it for sure. Wait, PVS, I'm gonna send you something, and I need you to put this on stream at some point. Oh boy! Oh god! <laughs> yes, <laughs> Brittany, oh, you can boy. ask the next question. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, for anybody else who wants to uh, wants to pick it up, do you, any of you have any particular plans for the next particular Aegis season or any particular uh, season coming up in the future? Any plans for continuing your trip throughout Amateur Leagues? Sadie, are you going to say it? What, what's that? What was it? <laughs> this guy's not even paying attention. Sorry, what was <laughs> He's in gen chat I talking was, shit. I was asking to see if any of you had any particular plans for future oh. tournaments in particular. Yeah, no. Uh I'm this is it. I'm retiring from Cap. But I think uh just maybe casual leagues here and there, but I'm I'm definitely taking a, a break from more of a permanent break from super competitive leagues. Wow. Oh. You're oh, take, are you taking, is it a self-imposed break or a yeeted break? A self-imposed <laughs> break. I got, you know, a family to start, and, um, you know, for everybody looking to keep playing League of Legends, I'm 32, so you could do it, even if you're old. <laughs> but it's uh, definitely starting boomer. to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, ending your potentially ending your career off on a championship win, a back to back championship win, no less, has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, you know, maybe if we'd gotten out in the first round of playoffs or something, I, I maybe would reconsider, but back to back, I feel like this is a what better time than any. Not, can't go much higher than the top, can you? Um, my question for you all is um, what matchup concerned you the most um against the chillers like or even if you weren't concerned like at least who did you at least were like all right guys this is someone we don't want to get ahead or someone we want to keep tabs on um so which player did you guys ha all have your eye on particularly or was it just a mix mixture yeah i think it was always jungle um yeah. As much as Shady is the GOAT, Technics mm -hmm. was playing super well throughout all the, all the whatchamacallit, mm -hmm. series I've seen. And I think that's probably, like, our worst, like, matchup if you think about, like, what Shady plays, what Technics plays. Um, we also had a scrim against them before playoffs or something like that. I think mm -hmm. I said it on the other stream before. We got kind of railed by them, not gonna lie. So I was a little worried about that. Um, but, yeah, I think we were able to control Technics, and it went well. I yeah, I, I, on no sleep. I'd like to let that be known. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to add on to what he said, I think that you know, a player like Technics really excels in like a more chaotic environment. And our team, which is why we did so bad in scrims, is like we would just play every play, and then on stage, you know, for playoffs, we're just like, don't do anything, don't take anything close, just play the the sure play. And when you're playing carry champs and you can't get ahead in jungle, you know, there's no gold there, so. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I want to go back to game one where you guys decided to um, camp top lane on that volley bear, Shady Gecko, and you know the Kasante into the NAR matchup. What made you all decide? Um, let's focus on the top lane. You know, you had a Kaisa Tarek bot lane, Syndra in the mid lane. Um, so what made you all decide? Let's try and get Kasante ahead, even though it was BKP who kept KS. <laughs> Andy, you got this. Wait, what? Uh, I, uh, we didn't do anything. We just wanted linging, I guess. And then uh, he lost flash, and then we came back. It was it was just free, I guess. Sometimes if a, if a member just loses flash, you just keep repeat ganking them, yeah? Yeah. I mean, there's no real... Gotta camp this guy. It's just he lost flash, and then it was over. And Andy, you did pretty well there. Um, being the top lane island, you know, that we always hear... So are, would you say you're definitely the type of player that, like, I play to my team's needs? Like, if they need me to play two games of Ornn, I'm going to play two games of Ornn. Or did at yeah. some point where you're just like, ah, I'm kind of tired of this, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I would take the Ornn if it's given to me. It is what it is. But, I mean, I, I did get bored starting second game because it's I, I'm just sitting there and clearing waves permanently, so... I mean, that's sort of all you can really do versus the Rex I top. She is just sort of... She's going to sit there, she's going to gain health, and... Just can't stop her so uh as a little final note here i want to run down the list here in discord and just ask all of you if there's any final shout outs you want to give so andy chef starting with you last shout out for the ages stream anything you, anybody you want to call out anybody you want to say to anything to in particular shout out to the suit deck he was a great draft coach <laughs> really suit tech. Yeah. suit that yeah, game in the draft for us wow uh, my boy uh i guess that's it oh, oh wait i could also shout out beanie my other jungler from my other team he's a uh, plays almost like shady gecko runs it down my lane sometimes all good though shout out to that guy that's all that's it all right mystic uh mine would have to be also the c-tech for drafting and coaching as well as wow. uh how far I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how many i don't know how many people know epic but epic also coached oh, i know me. epic yeah, he coached me in AD for over two months there, so I'll shout out to him as well. And then, obviously, BKP, because, you know, noob KP. <laughs> yeah, you got anybody in particular? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you might have noticed that uh, Sutek started uh, drafting for us after the regular season, so you might have seen a little uptick in our quality of, uh, of drafts, but uh, I... I my shout out is BKP. Uh, I wasn't really going to do uh, an Aegis team this split. And then he said, you know, hey, we need bodies for this tryout uh, for ID. And I tried out and I was liking the team. So I said, hey, get in here. And then we made it to finals. We won. Spartans? You know, actually, there is a, <laughs> I have quite a list of shout outs. Go for I guess it. the go first one would go to is to be Mystic. I was just a casual League of Legends player, just like doing my own thing until Mystic hit me up saying, hey, they're doing tryouts for this team. And now I'm up here winning the Grand Finals, having a championship in ages. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I really appreciate Mystic and my team. Soup Tech is a drafting coach god. Like, he can just read a book. It's just ridiculous. And then also I want to give shout outs to all the support staff at ID, honestly. Rudy, Godly, Palace, all these support coaches that give me tips and stuff and feedback. I honestly wouldn't be here without them. So just shout out to everyone all around. Thank you, team. Thank you, IDS, and all my friends and family, too. What's up? I might need to come look at ID then as an org. Well, we don't want you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, BK, please. Is there anyone you want to shout out? Is there a last note here? Yeah, of course. Um, I don't want to be like corny and like add on to whatever or repeat what everyone said, but just I think she's. Tech. Yeah, Suit Tech really turned it around for us. Uh, I think we were struggling a lot with drops. Really made the games easier to play. Um, and then specifically, you know, the team as well. I think everyone really turned it on during playoffs. Like I said earlier, dropped one game. Um, and then I got two more. I got uh, Gecko. You know, I think with him retiring, you meme Gecko, you don't meme Gecko. He's been winning a lot. It's like really the end of an era for Emerald junglers. 
Uh, and then the last shout is to Masoof. Uh, the guy declined the ID team tryout, and we won <laughs> without him. So fuck that guy, JK. He's a really good player. Um, and Shut thanks to all of ID community. I'm dead. Thank you so much, BKP. And once again, congratulations. The ID what? super over. Wait, wait before we end it, though, we, I do need to show the people um, something that I think is very important that they see the preparation that came into this match here. PBS, throw it up. <laughs> oh we, we caught the leak. We got the PD. We got the spreadsheet. Look at there this preparation is. here that my man Shady Gecko, like, some of y'all may have thought I was memeing about this man's prep. It, it, it's not a meme. This is real. This is real. Like, if you want to get to the top, you're going to have to put in some effort, right? Unless you're just that talented. And then we're sending the shadow state after you because you're probably going to get yeeted, okay? <laughs> but yeah, um, so congrats to all the ID Supernova winners. Shady is retiring, so that way he won't get yeeted. The rest of you... Um, I'll be going to we'll, Diamond. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be in touch. <laughs> Good luck in the ABL. One final time, congratulations to the members of ID Supernova. And that's going to be it for us here in the AEL for one final time. Thank you all so much for joining us. Redacted, thank you for stepping in for color casting. We appreciate you. PBS, I hope you all our producer it. in the back, making sure everything runs smoothly. I've been one too pretty. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great night. Peace.